everything was going okay. I know this is right in the right in the camera. Sorry. Let's move that over here. How are you guys doing this morning? Make sure everything's okay here. Jeez, I got a lot of browsers open. All right. Uh, go live. Ooh, it's been a long weekend. Kind of just waiting for stuff to happen, right? I mean, at least I was. Yeah, I was really excited. First, thank you for, for stopping by here. We got 10 people in here. Make sure you guys hit that like button as soon as you come in here. Sorry, I just clicked the wrong button. Where's the edit tool? A hundred by the end of the day. Let's go. I'm all for it. Yeah, we're seeing we're seeing a lot of great movement. Um, well, actually, it just started to fall down a little bit, but we were seeing some good movement up to you know fifty one dollars and seventy five cents. Let's hope we can continue to see that movement here today. That will be amazing. Uh, da, 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 da. Looking for an AMC AMC thumbnail. How's everybody doing today? What's going on? Uh, what's up, my guy? Um, doing pretty good. Ready for this week's chapter? Oh yeah, I uh, this week's chapter is going to be uh, candlestick patterns, and um, it's really interesting. I just uh, finished recording it, and I think it's going to be really good um, because candlesticks are probably one of the most important pieces. One of the most important pieces here. So, two hundred by Friday. That's what we need to hear. We need to hear some more positivity. We need to get to a thousand by Friday. That's that's the positivity we need to see. Sweet Captain America shirt. Uh, yes, yes, I, I love this shirt. I have two uh, uh, Falcon and the Winter Soldier shirts. Oh God, do I need to sneeze? Ugh. did you sleep? Uh, not really. I was kind of, uh, you know, excited what was going to happen. And also my sinuses are still, or not sorry, uh, my allergies are still messing up with me. Uh, it was actually a little bit better before I started recording the videos I did this morning. Um, and now it's kind of getting worse. My nose is getting more stuffy. Yes. A hundred K I'm, I'm trying to talk about this because a lot of people are like, I don't, I don't see how it's possible. And I think, you know, I, I put 500K on my last video. It's really just to put emphasis on the fact that we can get to unheard of numbers. It's a lot different. I'm on the East Coast, yes. It's it's a lot different um, than just saying, oh, it's going to get to 100K. Because, yes, I understand it's quite, you know, difficult for it to get to 100K. $100,000, yes, it's quite difficult. But um, it, it's possible. And... It's also it, it's also telling you that we can get to crazy numbers by just following a set of rules, really. Last video, he said, uh, Tom and Hold yet sold uh, more than half of his shares and soon the stock went up just a little. Look, this is this is what it's about. I mean, people don't understand exactly what the overall situation is, the the. The more people that hold less shares, Mike, Mike Fountain, um, the more people that hold less shares, the better the overall situation is. If you sell a very small portion of your shares at taking profit, 
it's not going to affect the squeeze as if you're selling, you know, 10,000 shares, you know, or a thousand shares. When people end up getting to these points to where they're at higher and higher points, they're going to derail the squeeze by selling, you know, a thousand, two thousand, five thousand shares. This is my whole overall concept. It's like if you have less shares, if more people have less shares, more people make money. You continue the squeeze. So just say you're up in that one hundred thousand dollar range and you have ten thousand, ten thousand shares. Are you going to sell all ten thousand? Because if you sell all ten thousand, that's going to derail the squeeze, and then you're going to be taking money away from a lot of other people. However, if you sell a hundred shares, you're going to be continuing that squeeze, and maybe you can sell ten shares after that, ten shares after that, whatever it actually is. But you're not derailing the squeeze. So this is what I'm saying: is that if you hold less shares, it's better for you to be able to sell all of it at at the high rather than, um, you know, selling a very uh, large portion of it. So for me, it was more or less on capturing the initial investment, understanding the full portion of the squeeze, understanding that I don't physically need to gain $6 million, right? I can, I can gain that. I don't need to gain $6 million in one trade. That's not the overall thought of it. I need to, one, show discipline. Discipline is the biggest thing when it comes to day trading and swing trading. And I understand this is not the normal swing trading or day trading um, situation, but then also understanding how everyone else can make money. If I sit here and say, you know what, I don't care about everybody else and buy up uh, you know, 20,000 shares and then derail the squeeze when it gets to $2,000, like that's a little ridiculous. There are people that are probably going to end up selling at these higher and higher points and they're going to derail that. And I don't want to be a part of the problem. That's the issue. There's a lot of things that factor into that. And that's why I hold less shares and will not sit here and buy a crazy amount. I will tell other people to buy some more, say, hey, you know, um, it's this is a great position. I'm not going to say, hey, you, you buy some more. This is not financial advice. It's merely just my opinion. But I will sit here and spread the word and tell everybody, hey, this is a good position. Even if you have about 10 shares, it's good. Even if you have about 20 shares, it's still good because it can get to 100K. The more people that hold, the better. If we have one person sell 10 shares because they only had 10 shares, that's not going to derail it. If we have one person that sells 10,000 or 20,000 or 100,000, I mean, that's going to derail it. So for the people that are saying, oh, I'm, I'm just, you know, buying more and more and more and more and more, I understand, but you're, you're letting greed consume you. You know, I, I don't want that to, to happen. And, you know, for people to not make money off of this, because remember, we're going to get to a certain point to where, um, you know, people actually buy at those high numbers. So you're going to have people that probably buy in the thousands before it ends up squeezing to maybe a hundred thousand or whatever. Uh, or, you know, if you're only seeing it get up to 10,000, they might buy at 500 before it ends up squeezing to 5,000. You know what I mean? So then they would end up losing money on the way down as people sold at a thousand or 2000 or whatever. So it, it's, it's more of a strategic play than anything. And, uh, it's not something where I'm I'm looking to hold the most out there. I'm not I'm not a leader. I am literally just a person here to spread the word that AMC is a big a big push. It uh, has large squeeze potential, and we know that this can get to uh, massive numbers if we play this the right way. Because hedge funds are going to be forced to cover at more and more prices. So above, let's say five thousand, hedge funds are going to need to cover, you know, and basically say, okay, you know what, I'll pay six thousand for this. There's not enough available. I'll pay ten thousand. There's not enough available. I'll pay twenty thousand. Stuff like that. But the What's going to happen is if you sell 10,000 shares, that makes 10,000 shares available for them, which decreases the price that they're going to end up, you know, throwing at it and say, you know what? It's not worth, it's not worth uh, 90,000. I'm going to buy it for 60,000. And then it starts bringing it down. So that's why I don't want everybody to sell 10,000 shares, you know, at that point. So that's my overall, uh, you know, talk of that. And I understand people saying that you know, hey, you know, you took out this money at this point. Yeah, obviously I did, but it shows that I don't have greed. There's not not a greedy like bone in my body. So I'm going to be a person that sticks to my strategy and says, hey, you know what? Uh, this is exactly what I'm doing from the beginning. 
This is something that I talked about right from the beginning. Literally, the first video I created was talking about this and how it's always great to understand what your initial uh, target is or your initial uh, profit is and where you can actually take out some of those, especially if it's either uh, double or triple, you can do whatever you want there. And then you can let the rest grow, let the rest um, continue to grow. I'm, I'm telling you, I'm not going to have more than 100 shares when it hits its peak. I'm not. Because um, I, I don't want to sit here and derail it all with, you know, even just 700 shares might might do the trick. So I'm not going to sit here and, uh, you know, try and derail it. So I'm letting you know I will have 100 shares when it hits its peak. I will let it sit there and then probably um, the ultimate peak, it might even be 10 shares. So either or, if it gets to 500K and you have 10 shares, you know, you can sell those 10 shares. Now, if you have, um, let's say, two 2,000 shares when it hits its peak and the peak is uh, $100,000 or $500,000, are you going to sell all of them or are you going to sell just a portion of it? You know what I mean? That's that's on you to basically say, do you care about other people or do you only care about yourself? You know what I mean? So for me, I'll even if I do have 100 shares at that peak, I'll only send te sell 10 at the peak because um, I don't need that much and I don't want to take anything away from other people. As long as I'm gaining a decent amount from AMC, I'm perfectly fine from it. So that's my overall spiel from it. I won't continue on after that. It's not about greed, Matt. It's, a, it's about holding for all these apes, period. Yeah, again, it is. But the thing that we need to understand is more people need to hold on to this. We, we all need to be in this together just like you said we're all in this together 100 percent. but what we need is more and more people to hold less shares so it's it makes the squeeze a lot bigger if you if more people hold on to less shares so if we're holding 80 percent but more people are holding it, it's a better situation than if one person, just imagine if we have these whales that end up selling off it, they're comfortable with a, uh, I don't know, $5,000, they're gonna define where the peak point is. So just trying to make sure that the squeeze goes to everybody and not just, what? This guy has no idea what he's talking about. I've been in the stock market for quite some time. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm not doing what Matthew is, is doing, holding until 10K, uh, let sell for a profit. So yeah, all, all the people, j just just wait. I mean, this is the mindset that we don't want to have as a community. I understand we want to hold as as long as possible, and we continue to hold. We always want to, we always want to hold. But the th the thing that we don't want to do is be greedy to take everything away from everybody. I'm telling you, there's going to be people that have 10K, 20K shares that sell at whatever they feel like the peak is. And if you feel like the peak is, let's say, what did you say, $10,000? If you think the peak is $10,000, you just derailed it at $10,000 by selling your 10,000 shares. So that's what I mean by being greedy. You're taking everything away from or a lot from a lot of people. So again, yeah, I know. I'll, I'll do members only in like two seconds because people are ridiculous. All right. All right, so we have 423 people in here. Hit the like button. If you want to hit the dislike button, then please uh, do so. Anything, um, <laughs> any type of engagement helps. So whether it's dislikes or likes, uh, I'll I'll take it. Um, just buy the dips and simply hold. When the price starts to get into the the hundreds, it will be difficult to hold. Yeah, one hundred percent. All of these people that are saying, "Oh, I'm holding to you know, um, uh, uh, I don't know, ten k or a thousand dollars." I guarantee they're gonna they're gonna be those those first people that sell everything. And uh, are comfortable with it, which I understand. You can sell, you can sell everything if you want to. But when it starts to get into the land of the hedgies covering, that's where we don't want to end up selling those ten thousand dollars. Like right now, where we still haven't seen hedge funds cover, 
it's not an it's not an issue at that moment. You know, it, it's not an issue for uh, us to you know if you wanted to take some out, you could take some out. But what I'm saying is is that uh, when we get to that that land of the hedgies covering, we don't want to make those large moves. So if you're going to make those large moves, it's probably going to be you know in the hundreds anyways. So uh, we'll see how all of this plays out. I just hope it's we all come together and understand that. You know, we're a community. We're trying to build this up to as high as possible. And also, you know, making sure everybody can make money while teaching the hedge funds a lesson. Because teaching the hedge funds a lesson is probably the biggest piece. It feels good to be a member. Yeah. <laughs> thank you for being a member. Lone Wolf, thank you for becoming a member. Uh, I'm with you, brother, all the way. I appreciate that. Uh, Japes, thank you for becoming a member. I feel bad that so many people are are holding out for 100k and 500k will be uh so many bag holders in my opinion trust me i hope hope it goes that far but uh, everyone will benefit uh yeah everyone but not everyone will benefit yes 100 percent. and especially with the mindset that i've seen today literally in the first 15 minutes of talking about amc there's so many people that are just like you know f everyone else and it's like what are you even in the right community like are, are you even like are you even for the squeeze or are you just for yourself? Like, I don't, I don't know if you understand the message behind it, but it's not just about you making money. It's about everybody else, you know, making money, the little guy, you know, making money. And it's not just one little guy. It's also everybody. Thank you for silencing the trolls. No problem. No problem. Uh, another early morning uh, rip. Good morning from Colorado. Good morning. Yeah, we have seen a little bit of a rip. You know, it went up to about 6% at um, $51.75. It's now starting to come back a little bit. Um, I am, if you guys are interested, I am uploading, um, you know, basically an audio book and my reaction to those audio books or that audio book or whatever audio book we, we look at. But right now it's How to Day Trade for a Living uh, by Andrew Aziz. And right now we're in chapter seven. We're going to be in chapter, well, I'm uploading chapter six, but it will be chapter seven um, next week. And um, I think it's really good. I think it's a good book to, to learn from and also get my perspective on. Uh, most of us bought in early. Yeah, that's what I mean. I mean, uh, we're not going to see anything derail the squeeze until we get to a point to where um, hedge funds have to cover. You know, once hedge funds really start to cover, then we're gonna see if people start selling thousands and thousands of shares, that's where the issue will come into play. That's where you'll see that derail, derailing of the squeeze. But right now, yes, we're just holding. There's a lot of people holding, but if people do take out 10 shares, 100 shares, you know, 400, 500 shares, whatever it is, it's not something that will derail the squeeze because the squeeze hasn't, hasn't happened yet. Right now we're in the midst of, uh, the price increasing a rapid amount based on FOMO buying, not really covering of those shares. Um, it's just a lot of people that are interested in it because the price is rapidly increasing, right? So it's a different story. Let me change my account here to MP Shorts and I'm gonna start this. If AMC breaks 250, I'm quitting my job. <laughs> Just remember, I think uh, the best bet is to always keep the squeeze going. So instead of selling your whole position, whenever you get to a, a place that you're comfortable with selling, um, you need to make sure you, you know, stagger that a little bit so that you keep the squeeze going. Now, if it's not a, if it's not a lot, like if it's not like 20,000 shares, then you're okay. You should have seen how, how toxic me, Kevin chat was. He had to delete uh, toxic super chats. Really? I didn't see that. I was I started watching his uh his stream with um is it the one with Matt and and Trey? Cuz I started watching his stream. How do you listen to an audiobook in in the member section? Last video I seen was was the ETF one. So the the member section is a different different story. So I do the ETFs on um the the money makes money member, but the audiobooks I do over on Patreon because I have to pay for the audiobooks, pay for the service and all that stuff. So I do it over on Patreon and um, that's the third level, which is $20, uh, just to, $20 a month, I believe, to get like those books. So basically it's like you're paying for your own book and my perspective on that book. Um, so yeah, I think 
That's what I do that over there. I don't do that over here. So Patreon's a different story. So yeah, if you wanna if you wanna join that, you can go ahead and join that. I do have a taste of what I offer. Um, I put it on Patreon. If you are a like a five dollar member, if you're the first level, um, then you can check that out and see what it's all about. Um, and then if you're interested in it, you can always you know check it out. There's right now there's uh, like I said, there's five chapters on there. Um, I'm uploading the sixth chapter today, uh, and then the seventh chapter is going on there. Um, maybe even at the end of this week, I might do two chapters this week, uh, to put that on there. So um. all right, no, it's not for kids next. Uh, let me edit this, retake thumbnail. Oh, I can't even. See, what you gotta do, there's always the, the standard thumbnails that you do. Always the standard thumbnails, <laughs> whatever that is. But we'll see how that is. Uh, we'll just do it in portrait. Uh, hit the like button. Yes, everybody hits that like button. We have 615 people in here, guys. Hit the like button if you like the content or hit the dislike button if you don't like the content. Just engagement in general helps out. Uh, yeah, the stream with Trey and Matt. Yeah, I didn't I didn't see the whole entire thing and I would like to, I wanted to sit down and watch it, but I was in the midst of a lot of other things. You know, family time on the weekends. I really hope this goes to a thousand a share. I can buy my first home. Yeah, just remember to factor in taxes as well. Uh, how do you listen to the... Uh, okay, I just read that. Uh, but yeah, like I said, um, the the audiobooks, uh, Patreon, all of that, you're going to find that. Let's see, let's go over here. Let's show you guys. Here's... But yeah, there's um, there's another tier. So there's these tiers right here. Uh, we have the Discord member. We have the Profit Hands, Expert Profit Hands, to where you get uh, audio books, all of this different stuff. So uh, if you guys are interested in it, then definitely go ahead and check it out. Um, and uh, yeah, and I'm I'm thinking about adding another tier where it's one on one type of thing. If you wanted to have some sort of, you know, understanding of you know, maybe how to either build a YouTube channel or, you know, trading in general. I think either way, it's, it's always, always good. Only, only Hedges didn't hit the, the like button. <laughs> Love your dedication. I had to become a member after seeing, uh, you live before sun up. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's what I, that's what I try to do. I try to give everybody information that they need. Um, but you know i can't stay live for the whole entire time obviously i work i work a, a nine to five so it's very tough for me to get get on and stay on for the whole entire day so it's better to be able to do it you know before everybody even gets on or everybody's up i'm always up at this time anyways so it doesn't make sense why i wouldn't do that I was expecting more of a gap up this morning. Hopefully it's just early. Yeah, I, I was expecting a little bit more too. Uh, but we did see a little bit of a gap here and an increase quite a bit. But to get up to 50, break 50 is, is definitely good. I would love to see $100 today, but it, it's not really telling me that we're going to see the best day possible. Just know that um, if we go into what the days look like, if we go into the day chart, you're going to understand, look at the RSI down here. So this RSI is actually still being overbought. 
So it still has a potential chance to pull back. There's a lot of positions that are like that. And when we start seeing that, we still have a chance to pull back a little bit more today based on normal movement. And since this is normal movement, um, good morning. Uh, how high do you expect AMC to, to go? Uh, today, if we see a positive day, we can definitely see it. I would love to see it hit that uh, 60, $65 range. But um, we're seeing a pos we're seeing positivity in the pre market. Some other things are actually uh, negative. Let's look at what the overall popular. Yeah, a lot of things are actually negative in the pre market, so it could be grounds for reversal. So if it's a positive day, I'm hoping for that sixty five dollar mark. That's where I'm looking for. Where I'm setting my my uh uh I don't know. I wouldn't say price target because I'm not selling, but um at that uh point today that. I can't even think of any words today. The high point, let's go with that. Um, but if it's gonna hit a low point, we're probably gonna see it hover or stay flat, just somewhere where we're seeing consolidation to bring down that RSI. Uh, but yeah, the, the day chart looks overbought, you know, overbought an extensive amount. <laughs> and now it's starting to come back a little bit. So we need to see that get back to about 50 on the on the chart here uh you know settle down and we can go from there so if we start seeing consolidation this could be the beginning of a bull flag setup just a day a day chart you know bull flag um and that's where we start seeing this consolidation here and then eventually take off so we're looking for that rip that is our safety uh net in case the price is crashing early in the morning yeah i'm right here right here Matt, do you think after the squeeze, you could see yourself uh, quitting your nine to five? Is is the price target for being able to retire early, uh, full time YouTube trader? Yeah, I mean, I could do that now. Uh, I just, I I don't know. It's just something about a, a nine to five that just adds comfort to you. You know what I mean? Like, uh, I I love I love the fact that I have a nine to five, and also, um, you know, uh. All right, what do you say? Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, what was I saying about nine to five? Yeah, I, I love the fact of having a nine to five. I also love doing my job uh, because my job is I'm uh, a financial analyst. So I, I love to be able to do that. I hate to have to react to people or tell people, hey, you know, this is my job. And I'm a, I'm a YouTuber and uh, explaining that, that I have to explain a lot more. What do you actually do? Um, you know, what can you provide and value? All of this other stuff. It ends up being uh, a little ridiculous uh, to explain. And I don't, I, I don't know. It's just weird. It's not the fact that I need this money in order to quit my, quit my job. I can do that now um, because I make enough money from, from trading, from YouTube, from other sources of income. I have a ton of sources of income, um, but it's just the something about having a nine to five that just means a lot to me. Means way more. So we have 709 people in here, guys. Hit that like button. Uh, I've been watching your streams for, for months and I love your honesty and uh, reality-based approach to all this. I remember back uh, in the eight to $9 range, you felt the potential was 15 to $20. Uh, what changed your mind? So the, the overall potential of it, basically what I'm saying is not the potential of this getting to a crazy amount or getting to $20, $20 as, a, a, as that crazy amount that it needs to, to move. I was saying it had the potential to get to 15 or 20 um, in a short period of time. The fact of the matter is it didn't get to those points until we seen it, you know, obviously this last week, really. Uh, well, actually week and a half, two weeks or so. But saying that, that was my that was my profit target to take out some of my initial investment plus my um, plus a little bit of profit. You know, the rest was going to ride. I knew that it had a lot more potential to get to a hundred dollars, two hundred, a thousand dollars, all of that stuff. So. I knew that it was going to get up there. The fifteen to twenty dollars was mainly just my um, my personal targets to take out my initial investment, so that I can put that either elsewhere in uh, a different place, and then only trade on what's gravy. Because if you actually have, if, if you're not trading on the things that you know you initially had, like all of your money that you got from your job or wherever you got it from, it's a better situation. It's better peace of mind 
for you to continue the squeeze. Like, I don't care about the money that's in there right now. Uh, obviously, I, I care a little bit about it, but I could lose all of it and not, not even bat an eye. That's what I'm saying. So you start to get more comfortable with holding because if I was a person that wasn't comfortable with holding, all of this money would have been pocketed. Now, I normally would see a day trade like this. If I did see a day trade like this um, or a swing trade like this and take it at 72 and then buy back in at these lows of 37. Now, I haven't done that this whole entire time. If I would have done that from the beginning, then one, I would have been completely canceled on, on YouTube because people don't like when you sell the position uh, at all. Um, and uh, two, it just wouldn't have been a, a better situation for it to, for it to grow. So I needed uh, to look at it at a level to where, where would be the most comfortable. So uh, $20 taking your, a little bit of your initial investment or actually all your initial investment and then keeping what's gravy on top of it was just so easy for me. And now I can sit and look at these, these shares and just say, I really don't care. I really don't care what they do. Um, I know that it has the potential to squeeze. So now just set whatever targets you want on the way up and, uh, you know, sell your position on the, on the way up, or if you want to sell some on the way down, but I know that I can leave some, uh, for the ultimate peak. And also I have 10 shares in my, um, uh, my Roth IRA. So if that gets to 100k or 500k, I can sell those 10 shares over there, and you know be sitting on a, a decent amount for, uh, uh, for my Roth IRA there. Uh, glad to be a member here, Matt. I learned a lot from you uh, during this this whole AMC situation. That's great to hear. That's great to hear. I mean, what I want to do is just teach people the the laws, the rules to uh, day trading and swing trading, whether I know all of the technical analysis you need to know, or I know none of the technical analysis you need to know. You know what I mean? I'm just trying to uh, teach people some of the basics behind it. Hey, you know, uh, risk management. Risk management is one of the most important pieces. If you can go in there and understand what your risk is, you've seen it on multiple trades that I did. I posted a video on cost and how I made two two trades and it went negative on me, but then I ended up profiting about three hundred plus dollars on what cost did because of the fact that I was able to find an exact point to where I can make that money back. You know what I mean? So I. I lost $20 in the first trade, lost $20 in the second trade, ended up making $300 plus dollars in the, in the third trade, and then another like $20 in the, the, the fourth trade. So you can make five trades, and what I typically like to do is understand what my profit to loss ratio is, and say if I'm, if I'm going to make $100, I'm willing to lose 20 five times. Thanks for following, uh, thanks, I followed your advice on the, on that and pull my initial investment at $30 uh, left 5k riding uh, that's that's now closer to 10k pure profit never would have done that without your example yeah again that's that's always great to be able to um, look at it and say um, you take out your initial investment and you have basically every everything else that's gravy because the squeeze has not started yet. So we're literally in the beginning of the squeeze. So for people that are not comfortable with where the gains can get to, we understand the potential that it can grow because if you have a thousand shares, it grows at a thousand dollars every single dollar that it goes up. If you have 4,000 shares, it grows at $4,000 every single dollar that it grows up. But sooner or later, greed kills you. Um, and I don't want you to get stuck on greed. Thank you, Mark, for becoming a member. And thank you, um, hopefully I'm saying this right, uh, uh, Akia, Akia for becoming a member. Uh, let's see. Everyone, please hit the like button. Yeah, we have 800 people in here, guys. If you could hit the like button, get it up to 400 likes, that would be pretty, pretty great. Uh, pretty perfect, actually. Hopefully we have a nice green day today. I'm hoping as well. I mean, we're seeing MVIS up quite a bit today, up uh, 8%. It went all the way up as high as $23. So just be aware of what MVIS can do. I think that was a great a great buy somewhere around uh, these levels, obviously mid, mid May. You're starting to see it pick up. That's right. Okay, perfect. Great. Um, morning, Matt, when you, when you got into trading, where did you start to educate yourself? So I started with uh, this book here. Um, 
how to day trade for a living. I started with this book and he has a YouTube channel where he used to go more in depth and now it's more of a community of traders that post a lot of their stuff. So it's not really anything to where he he goes fully in depth of what he's doing. Um, but Andrew Aziz, um, How to Day Trade for a Living by Andrew Aziz is a really good book. It breaks down the really basic level to it and understanding the most important pieces like you know risk management, candlesticks, you know, uh, charting patterns, all, all the stuff that you really need to know. That's where I went, uh, I started with. Now, I think he put the emphasis more on like actually day trading, like, you know, sense and, you know, caring about that more than anything. I try to keep it at a basic level. So I feel like I improve it just a little bit and adding another level or another layer to this book. Um, but it's definitely a really good book and gives you the basics to it. And he also has an advanced level to where he basically goes through the basics again, but uh, at a more like advanced twist, if that makes sense. So I, I really like this book. I made a lot of mistakes in the beginning, day trading, trying to go with penny stocks, looking at that potential. And that's why I don't do my, many penny stocks now. I mainly go for um, some of these these stocks here. I'll go for MVIS and look for them to move um, you know, a couple dollars in a day. If it goes from a low of $18 to a high of $23, that's just enough for me to gain a dollar in a day, gain 100 or or $1,000, depending how many shares I wanna buy. So, how do you think AMC will perform at the open? Um, usually at the open, we see a little bit of a decrease and we see a V-shaped recovery. So I would imagine we're gonna see more of the same. We just need to see how the rest of the pre market is going to go for AMC. Right now, you're seeing it come back a little bit. It was up to 6% uh, of a, a high point in the pre-market. Um, and now it's down to about 2.5%. So it's starting to fall down a little bit, probably get back to some of these lows and then start to recover a little bit towards the end. But at the in the beginning of the pre-market, we've seen time and time again to where it does decrease right away, right from the open. So just get ready for that little pullback if, it, if we do see some sort of an increase um, towards the end of the, the pre-market. Appreciate it. No problem. So yeah, I'm I'm actually going over that book in my Patreon if you guys are interested. And um it, it doesn't hurt. You can actually get a taste of what it is if you sign up for the uh the five dollar level. So if you sign up for uh this five dollar level, you can actually you get a taste the, of what it's all about. If you sign up for um because uh, I posted $5 for level, everybody to see to see what, what it's you're all actually um, getting uh, there. Posted, um, um, but then you can also be a Discord see. member as well. So if you want to become I a Discord see, member, then what it's you're actually getting there. Uh, 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 um, but then you can also be a Discord member. So if you want to become a Discord member, what it's all about. If you want to um, put that link, but then you can also be a Discord member. So if you want to become a Discord member, what it's all about. If you want to get five members we gained today, we're almost at 400 likes. We have 863 people. We're almost at 400 likes. Five members we gained today. Ad here. We're almost at 400 likes. We have 863 people. What was your take on the whole? Numbers we gained today. Ad here. We're almost at 400 likes. The news anchor talking about. What was your take on the whole? Like actually agreeing to the ad here. The news anchor talking about. What was your take on the whole? Like actually agreeing to the ad here. Okay. Perfect. Are you good now? Let me know. Let me know if we're good. I had on the uh, the desktop audio, and I pulled up uh, Twitch. So Logan versus Mayweather. What were your thoughts? Can you do a reaction video to the fight? Yeah, I can definitely do a reaction video to the fight. I I seen some some uh, Inception. <laughs> I can definitely do a reaction video to the fight. I won't give my thoughts here, I guess, but. <laughs> DDoS attack. Yeah, well, I fixed it. I think I fixed it. Perfect. All right, so we have about, actually a drop down. I guess the echo kind of got people upset. Uh, I want to buy some positions into Zom. Yeah, I. I still have 7,000 shares of Zom. Uh, is your PC belty? No, it's not. I, I, for my, um, my streaming software, I had on the desktop audio. Now my audio isn't synced. Yeah, it's fine. Sometimes it, it doesn't, it unsyncs and resyncs and I, I don't know what's going on, but, uh, Yeah. 
it happens. Sometimes my audio doesn't actually sync. Sometimes it does. But e either or, I feel like you're getting the the same type of information. But uh, it, it it sucks to have to do that because I actually have to add like a, a little bit of a delay to it or I have to take away the delay. But then for my other camera, it adds more of a delay because the delay is different in both cameras. Uh, Matt, do you have any positions in AMC? What? Yes. Yes, I have uh, 700 shares in AMC. If you can see down here, 757, 756 shares in AMC. Which I... Uh, uh, recently added more. I took the uh, the profit that I had out of the initial investment. Now I only have my initial investment elsewhere, but uh, I took the profit out of my initial investment and put it back in there um, and letting it sit there. So it raised my cost basis, but it's cool. Cost basis won't matter when this actually squeezes. It's not going to matter at all. Uh, we have five people over on Twitch. Thank you for watching over there. If you want to follow me, go ahead and follow me. Uh, good morning, Matt. It's a good day to buy and build a PC. Took some gains on Thursday, and I'm still in this fight. That's amazing to hear. You know, I need I need to build another PC because I have a simulator in the garage. That's the my laptop is not working right. It just doesn't. I didn't see a quiet place to. No, I wanted to, but uh. We were busy this weekend. Erica was busy with a bunch of things, so couldn't really watch it. Uh, we might go see it next next weekend. We're, we're on vacation next week. Uh, I'll still be posting, still be uh, live in the morning. I don't know. New haircut? <laughs> no. No, I literally just uh, kept it natural today. Instead of putting uh, the curl product, I just uh, kept it natural. <laughs> Healthier for your hair. Since I don't really go anywhere anyways. Matt, what are your thoughts on eToro? Currently using it to, to trade AMC. Should I switch to Weeble or should I stay in eToro? Isn't eToro that platform to where um, you can see, see everybody else's trades? I don't think it's a bad platform. I haven't used it, so I can't really give you a full opinion on it. Um, but I definitely like traditional like trading platforms that you can use. So you can use Weeble, Fidelity, whatever. But if you are comfortable with eToro and you're finding success in it, then go ahead and use that. But if you're going uh, day trading, I would say you need something that's going to give you technical analysis or swing trading, something that gives you technical analysis, not just following, you know, maybe what other people do. Now, that's always a great, a great thing to understand is like, why are people doing this? So you could see what they're trading. Then maybe you can go into Weeble and see technical analysis to why they would be looking into that position, what they see there. So either or, I think it's it's great to have uh, both. But like I said, if you're looking for technical analysis, you would probably go with the Weeble uh, level of things. A kid and play vibe. Yeah, that's what I was going with. Got that high, high top. High top. Uh, I guess it's not a fade anymore. I gotta wait for my brother to cut my hair. Why do you live stream with wait, Why don't you live stream with Matt and Trey? Uh, whatever happened uh, to Max? Max stock? Jesus. I, I don't know what that is. Um, Max. Um, are you talking about the... Yeah, I don't know what happened to, to Max. I haven't actually checked his channel in a while if he's still doing this. He goes off and on with a lot of things. He's like, uh, if we're talking about that Max, um, he goes to a, a lot of different things. He's with like, you know, stimulus checks, you know, uh, investing, right? All, all this stuff. So... Um, I don't stream with uh, Trey or, or Matt, um, not because, you know, I don't like them or anything. Like, obviously, they're cool. Um, I've reacted to a number of Trey's videos. I respond in Matt's chat if he ends up seeing it because he has over 80,000 viewers or so. I'm just, uh, you know, very to myself. I'm an introvert. I didn't even like live streaming before this, but I so suddenly found a... a you know, a new love for live streaming. It's nice. It's, it's not a nice thing to be able to respond to the community and build a community at that. So, um, the reason why I don't is just because like I'm introvert. I'm more of a lone wolf. I'm always to myself. Even when I played uh, football in high school, uh, you know, college, I would always eat my, 
my uh, meals to myself. I would warm up like by myself. The only thing that was uh, really held me back was the fact that I was a receiver um, and also a, a tight end in in college, and I needed a quarterback to actually practice with. Uh, they did have a, a jug machine, but you know. Uh, let's see. Hey, brother. Good morning. I just woke up. I just woke up. I still have to prepare a little, uh, wish me luck with, uh, on, on the finals. Wait, you have, you have finals for like college or something. Good luck. Um, will you get taxed from the squeeze tendies? And if I keep the money in my, my brokerage, yes, you will. Once you pull out of your, of your investment, you get taxed on it. So if you, unless you have it in a Roth IRA, so if you put everything into a Roth IRA, I know you meant Matt Coors, but um, it, uh, huh? it, if you put it into a Roth IRA, you don't have to pay tax on it as long as you follow the uh, you know traditional rules of a Roth IRA. Uh, but when you actually pull it out of the investment and it's no longer growing, it's just physical cash in your account, you'll get taxed on it because it's, it's going to, um, they're going to generate, you know, your, uh, your tax form. And then you're basically going to say how much you gain in tax in, uh, in gains there. So just don't think if you keep it in there that you won't be taxed because you will, unless it's a Roth IRA. Like that's why I, I make a point to where if you want to day trade, sometimes you can day trade in the Roth IRA and go from there. But uh, it's very tough for you to take out that money and actually create a, a, a job out of it. Because what a lot of day traders will do is they create a job out of, um, you know, uh, day trading. And um, when they do that, they want to take some of that money and bring it back to, uh, you know, them back to their bank account. So you can look at what kind of, of tax you owe my tax tendies. What? Any thoughts on today's uh, pre-market pattern? Uh, the 15 MA and the 200 a are approaching um, each other as RSI being oversold. So when I look at the overall situation for the day chart, you can see that the RSI is still oversold. So it's probably going to be a point to where we see it either consolidate today um, or actually have a negative day, in my opinion, based on what we're seeing in the RSI, just traditional movements. Um, and people that are probably waiting to see how Monday turns out rather than, um, you know, buying in and, you know, FOMO buying and all that stuff. So we might see it level out and consolidate um, and then start to pick up after a while. So don't don't feel um, really upset if we see actually a week of consolidating. We don't know how this is going to play out, because from what I'm seeing here, we could be setting up a massive bull flag here. But you never really know there. Right. Uh, we'll be on vacation this week to Hawaii. Oh, wow. Congratulations. That should be fun. Hopefully you have good weather. Um, how long could you see this drag out for before, before July? Um, I think... Uh, what? How long do you see this drag out for for July? I think you could you could see it drag out. What is NFA? What is NFA? I'm I'm I know it's not that. National Futures Association? I don't think that's it. What is NFA? How long do I see this dragging out? I see it, I see it um, you know, dragging out for a while. If we see consolidation, we could see a number of days to where it does consolidate before it actually takes off. Um, or we could just see it take off, continue on that trend um, after it does end up getting back to a reasonable level of the RSI. Remember, this is not the squeeze yet. This is merely just an increase, a large increase that we've seen. That's pretty much it.
Um, if I have any news on the 15, sorry, I just literally moved this. All right, well, I'm going to change cameras anyways, because that camera's about to die. So that's fine. That works. We'll figure that out later. Um, how's your PlayStation? Have you hooked it up yet? Don't, let's not even talk about that. No, I haven't hooked it up yet. Um, but yeah, let me look at the pre-market and, and answer some questions. So I'm not seeing um, anything form right now. We are seeing a, a little bit of a pushback, uh, a little bit of a pushback up, a bounce, you know, maybe off of this $48 mark. So hopefully we could see this uh, increase and get over that $51.75 mark. Now for the pre-market, we've, we've seen pretty much the same thing where in the morning we've seen it increase quite a bit, get to a certain level and then start to decrease, you know, maybe around, um, I'm usually up at uh, 4.30, but then when I look at it or get ready for my stream before I started with this, uh, this large stream or long stream, um, it would be somewhere around the peak point and then it would start to fall as soon as I start streaming. So now um, you're seeing this increase. Most days you're seeing it increase uh, to a point and then uh, fall back down creating that peak. But we're not seeing that today. It might be something to where we actually see um, you know, some uh, in, indecisive movement really. So um, just jumping up and down from 50 or 51 to 48. So let's see how the rest of this pre-market plays out. Before we jump to conclusions, we are seeing uh, it create lower lows, maybe lower highs as it starts to stair step on the way up and we might see some positivity there. So um, get ready for that. It is currently five, uh, 5.53 in the morning. Um, we have a while until the market opens. So definitely get prepared for hopefully a good day we are over 400 likes so i appreciate everybody that hit the like button anybody that wants to become a member i only make it 99 cents to do so uh so that you know people can chat we get rid of spam and uh all the people that spread fear i think the news about the russell 2000 will drive the price higher today i already know that amc AMC and, and GME are going to uh, go bonkers. They finally, uh, they are finally positive. But it earned heavy dips. Don't be scared. Just be happy uh, for the big nasty dips. Yeah, I mean, you're always going to see any type of dips, especially, especially when we actually haven't had the squeeze yet. Uh, we have about 20 people over here. I appreciate you guys showing up over here. Not financial advice. It's not financial advice. Also, how do I become a member? Uh, love the show. So on my other channel... Um, all you have to do is click the link in the description. Uh, it's the first link in the description and you'll become a member over here. You won't be able to become a member because it's just, uh, I haven't set that up yet and it's not monetized over here. Uh, hanging out in the, in the green room. You going on Kona and Ryan later? <laughs> no, 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 I'm not. That's funny. Uh, we got about 21 people over in the MP Shorts channel. Thank you for showing up. I don't know what happened to my mic there. But uh, yeah, 20 people over in the MP Shorts channel, 861 people on the Matthew Perry channel, and about two people on Twitch. So I appreciate everybody that's watching. Um, anywhere that you are, if you could hit the like button or do anything to help me out, that would be great. We are seeing a little bit of a push um, right now up to 4%, up to $49, almost up to that $50 mark. Let's see if we can create a brand new high. So create these lower lows and lower highs. Have actually have that ascending level of support. I would love to be able to see that. Let me see if I can do a control line. There we go. Let's see if we can basically look at uh, this level. And we want to create these ascending levels of support here. Ascending levels of support, and we want that ascending level of resistance to create that channel, really. Um, is there a website that you can go that shows uh, when shorts are due per company? 
or is it just uh, a guessing game? I believe um, Ortex can give you a data, the uh, data on uh, days to cover, but I don't have um, Ortex. I don't have it available. I know it's like five hundred dollars a, a year or something. I don't have it. Um, but yeah, you can basically get that information. And to tell you the truth, they're always they're consistently shorting and covering uh, positions. They're not covering a massive amount right away, but they are consistently shorting and covering and you know accepting some losses and all of that stuff. Um, so it's not as easy as you think it is for them to just hold under their shorts. A lot of times they will double down and take and uh, you know cover some of their older shorts to add newer shorts on top of it uh, so that they're paying less interest. Um, as it increases, is it best to, to keep creating new and new and high stop losses? Um, so I, for this, for something like this, you need a mental stop loss. You can't physically create a, an actual stop loss because they will stop you out. They will 100% stop you out. If they're searching for it, they will find you and they will stop you out. I posted something on Twitter, um, with the, um, Liam Neeson voice somebody somebody put that on uh my channel in the chat and they were like they will find you and they will paper hand you and that's exactly what they will do they will find your your stop losses and they will sell you out of your position what's a good amount to start day trading with uh as a main source of income well in order to uh effectively day trade you need 25,000 in your account in order to like day trade so that you can um you know, make more than three trades um, in a in a week. Yeah, so you can make more than three trades in a week, and you can make more than three trades in a day. Like I can make, I can make five trades, six trades, ten trades in a day. I can trade with unsettled funds as well if I wanted to. Um, but that that's the thing. You can only do that if you have over twenty five thousand in your account. Now for uh for uh. What I like to do, I will hold about 30,000 in my account because if I lose some, then I hold less than 25,000 in my account. You know what I mean? So um, I never want to lose more than maybe a hundred dollars a day or you know, basically make that up by taking my next trade. I never really want to lose more than that, but I want to gain a hundred dollars a day. So ultimately, <clears throat> If I lose a hundred dollars in that day, then I made five unsuccessful trades, and that's a possibility. It can happen. And the thing is, is that if you make those five unsuccessful trades, you still live to fight another day. You know what I mean? So you you make those trades, you sell, you get stopped out at twenty dollars, you know, of a loss each time, and then you could basically live to fight another day because you only lost a hundred dollars instead of holding on to that position like some people will and lose thousands of dollars. You're only, you know, losing a hundred dollars. That's not a, a deal breaker. Risk management is one of the most important pieces of trading. Um, hear me out, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, people had to deposit over two billion dollars for AMC to move uh, to seventy five without the squeeze. To make the markets go down or up. It's the only way. Uh, it is the. It is only on you guys. Yes, uh, I I would agree with you. Um, by saying that right now we're literally in a, a point to where it's only controlled by the retail traders, the people that are investing, rather than the short sellers. Yeah, short sellers are driving the price down a little bit to indicate fear. I mean that's just what they do. Um, but the squeeze hasn't happened yet. So uh, if people are, you know, 100% comfortable with that, whatever they're doing, if you're not, if your um, like image is not actually out in the open, uh, it doesn't hurt to, you know, basically make some moves that are going to benefit you without derailing the squeeze. So I'm just going to leave it at that because my, um, my image is in the spotlight, right? So what I would typically do with a position that moves like this, whether it's a squeeze or it's not a squeeze, this is not the squeeze yet, right? We're just seeing a massive increase. And we've seen that with a number of positions. But if you actually see a position that moves like this, what I would typically do, and this is just a number of days, what I would typically do 
is always understand where that peak point is or close to it and what the potential is for it to come back down. If it's being oversold, overbought, whatever it actually is, um, you can basically make that move and um, profit some and then get back in. And that would be my typical move. However, with the squeeze, it's a different story. Uh, the squeeze is a lot of times to where you want to hold on. You never know when it's going to blow. And it could blow tomorrow, could blow the next day. Um, you just have to see. Uh, let's pray. Let's pray. Today is, is the start of the new beginning for everyone holding AMC. I have a stop loss, but it's very low compared to what, what it's at. It's, that's good to hear. But just remember, they can always do those stop hunts. And it can... It can they can stop you out at lower and lower levels. I made a decent uh, amount playing crypto over the last few months because I could uh, trade it as much as I want. Uh, thanks for the info. Yeah, no problem, no problem. I I love crypto. I love trading crypto, and I will continue to do that. Uh, let's see. We have nineteen people watching over here. Uh, let's see, I, I missed some stuff. Yes, sir. Big day. Hey, uh, the day I make a lot of uh, money and my girlfriend breaks up with me. What? <laughs> well, it happens. Uh, do you reckon shorts can drag this out for another month or two? New regulation and catalyst could uh, force their hand. Uh, just pride at this point. I think they can. Um, just know that any regulation or rules or laws that are put in place, just know that hedge funds typically have politicians and uh, people in government in their back pocket. So implementing these don't mean that they fully get implemented. And uh, I, I believe they could still drag this out. Uh, however, it, you can't fight the fact that they could, they're losing money. You know what I mean? Like you can't hide it. They're losing money. So if they're going to consistently lose money. That's the thing that's going to drive it out, not rules and regulations. Uh, Chris, thank you for becoming a member. The FUD has been uh, crazy, but uh, with with time, I believe it will go away and we are going to the moon. Yeah, I would agree with that. Is there a specific date that the hedge funds uh, need to cover their shorts or is it possible for them to hold indefinitely? Yeah, so um, they have a, I believe they don't really have a certain amount of time. I mean, if they're willing to pay the interest, they're willing to pay the interest, but uh, they consistently cover uh, sh older shorts to add on newer shorts. So it's not something where they're like, oh, they need to cover everything. Now, if they get margin called and uh, they just don't have the money to pay, then uh, yeah, obviously, you know, it, it, that's when we'll see this massive movement uphill because they don't have anything to pay. Um, they have to be covered and we see higher and higher prices in order for them to even, you know, get out of their positions. So, also, how do you identify on evil that's uh, being oversold or overbought? So, if you look at the RSI down here, you're going to see um, anything that's over 70 is considered overbought. Anything that's under 30 is being um, oversold. I believe that's what it is. Yeah, under 30 is oversold. Um, so, you see these levels as they get up to uh you know 83 um and it's all dependent on uh what weeble um you know generates for the rsi you can do the calculation yourself if you wanted to but it's all based on what weeble gives you uh but basically you can look at this and see that it is being overbought um on these levels now if you wanted to to put it up on weeble you would go to indicators and then you would select rsi here and it would either put rsi or take it away Uh, foundation forming on AMC side, uh, it will, it will move to $75, 75 level today again <clears throat> and tomorrow. I'd be ready for the dip and it goes back to 75. Don't forget to buy the dip when it's time. Uh, it looks like, it's like a big pivot. A chef, I mean the, the retailers won't be scared. Oh, you're talking to somebody else. Uh, good morning, Fresh Prince. <laughs> that's that's funny. Yes, I am Fresh Prince. Uh, my wife's boyfriend make 
Uh, made me sell my AMC stock. Well, that's horrible. Why did he do that? Looking to grab more AMC. What do you think is a good buy price uh, for today? I mean, it's a good buy price pretty much anywhere um, at where it's at right now. Um, if we can see it consistently increase, which we're seeing it pull back a little bit, I guess, right now from where it's at 2%, we're seeing it pull back. So uh, anything under 50, I mean, I would imagine it's going to be a good price because it, the cost basis is not going to matter once we see that ultimate squeeze, you know, to, you know, 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, 1,000, 2,000, whatever it gets to. Um, it, the, the cost basis is not going to matter. Uh, Matt is right. Had you uh, stop hunting me out? Uh, half of my BB shares at $13.80. Luckily, I bought back in at the lowest dip after hours market uh, at a spite. Yeah, I mean, they tend to find it. They tend to find it very easily. I personally think today will be a, a dull day, and I think tomorrow will be a, a bloody day, and I think Wednesday is when we will see big numbers. That's that's a good um, good take because I was thinking that based on the RSI on the day chart, it looks like we're going to be in a consolidation point. It looks like we might see it. Uh, physically just consolidate here and uh, level out. And uh, I think that's that's it because the RSI is completely oversold or overbought. And if we're at that point where, you know, uh, we're still being overbought after a number of days, we might see this come back down and resettle and probably get the RSI hovering around that 50 mark. If it's literally just trading, there's no, um, you know, uh, squeeze yet. And if there was a squeeze, then we would start saying that it doesn't matter if it's overbought. It's going to continue on the way up, you know. In my opinion, the best uh, strategy is to set text email alerts uh, trending down on your uh, profit. Uh, the judges trend off instead of the pre-market. Yeah, I guess that's a, that's a good trend. There's, there's always flaws with something, though. But yeah, I guess that's a good trend. Uh, juice, a good thing to do, best strategy. Uh, that's why so many people in their AMC stock uh, secrets so their, their wives slash husbands or anyone else doesn't pressure them to sell yeah I mean I told I told my wife exactly how much I'm up and how much other people are up and all this stuff and she's like well I mean why don't you take that money out and we could use that elsewhere and I'm like well we don't need to first of all I don't know if you've seen our bank account but we don't need to and uh, I'm just going to let it sit there because I truly do believe in the squeeze. And she was like, all right, you're up, you're up, uh, what was it, fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000? And you're like, and she's like, well, if it was me, I would take anything. And I was like, well, that's why you're not investing <laughs> the money. So you're saying that uh, you don't think the, the weekend pressure and, and naked short incident will be a major catalyst? I think it will, but I think people are still going to wait. Um, so typically when you see down days, you're going to see people wait to see what the day looks like. It's more of like a, Hey, let me sit back and watch. And if it's a good day, I'll get in, you know, or if it's a bad day, I'll wait for it to pull back and buy in. So a lot of times you see that. And especially after a large increase week, uh, if it's following normal rules of trading, you're going to see that it needs to get back to the, um, a, a decent level on the RSI. You know, whether it's just going to consolidate or decrease, that's what I'm thinking. I don't tell my wife how, how much I'm up. She's a queen paper hands. <laughs> I hear you. I'm just praying workhorse and ride climb so I can uh, stop bag holding. Bought at the highest dips on, on Friday of my life. <laughs> Yeah, I ended up, uh, you know, selling some my ride position at fourteen sixty. I knew I wanted to go up higher than that. My uh, my lowest price target was fifteen. I wanted it to retest at eighteen or retest at um, uh, twenty something, twenty one. Um, but I am seeing that it has a lot of potential, so I'm waiting for this to pull back a little bit more because I know it's still being uh, still has high short interest. And if ride still has high short interest, then I want to make my moves into that. Carl, come on. No, 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 no. Uh, let's look, where's ride? So it's right now it's down a half a percent. 
So yeah, I sold at uh, 1460. Um, watched this on the way down, and I made about I can't remember how much I made. Uh, I thought it was like eight hundred dollars, but I guess it's seven hundred sixty-eight. So, not bad, not bad. But yeah, waiting for Zomatica to make some moves, for Jaff King to make some moves, for Tesla to make some moves. Um, Ethereum is starting to increase as well, but that's a whole different story. As you know, I talked about going all in on Dogecoin. I did not yet. I'm waiting for that best opportunity. If I see that come back down, um, I hope to about 20 something before it skyrockets, I will basically go all in with what I have on uh, Dogecoin and try and just double that really quick, if not triple it. People think you're crazy for holding out for, for more. Um, some people that don't understand what's going on think I'm crazy for holding out for more. Um, some really close people to me actually, you know, uh, don't, don't think I should, uh, continue to do it. And they're like, oh, you're up, then take it. Typically that's the case with all of my day trading and swing trading. Um, this is the largest amount that I've ever made from a, a single trade. Um, because typically I will go for the smaller gains than anything else. So I'm always looking for that day trade or swing trade. And that's my opportunity that I build. I never really go for the YOLO plays at all. Um, just because I never like to take that much money and put it on a YOLO play. I would keep 25 or 30,000 in the account and most of that would go towards the day trading for the day, you know? So, uh, it was always a different story there, but there's a lot of people that are basically saying, Hey, you know, just, you know, cut it while you can and make some money. And I was like, typically that's what I would do with a position like this. If I was up $50,000, I would take that $50,000 plus the initial profit, take it all out, wait for it to pull back. And then when it does pull back, I would buy back in with more shares, wait for that to climb. And then basically, uh, you know, wash, rinse and repeat, you know, but uh, with AMC, it's something that has so much potential that you could physically miss where it's going to go. And if you do that, then you are buying in higher because you're chasing the position. And I don't want to be left chasing. I want to be a person that's like, you know, kind of leading really. Even though I'm not leading the the charge here for AMC, I'm just, I just want to be that person that's, that's in it at a low point and it has really no chance of getting back to those points until the squeeze is over or the overall situation's over. Um, so yeah, Carl's being weird. Matt, what do you feel like, uh, our upcoming week? Sorry if it's getting, I'm just getting here. So again, I talked about the fact that for AMC, the RSI right now is still at a point to where it's oversold. And I understand that this is not where we follow you know, full technical analysis or, or fundamentals really at all. But since the overall RSI is still high, I'm thinking we might see some sort of a consolidation um, or we might see it pull back a little bit and then consolidate to where it will increase. Just know that we're set up for a large bull flag here, um, setting this up and we see a little bit of consolidation for like uh, maybe uh, three, four, maybe three or four more days. And then Friday ends up being a really, really big one. Did Matt get a haircut? I didn't. Uh, I literally just uh, left it natural instead of uh, putting in the product. Let me blow my nose real quick. These dang allergies, man, they're they're killing me. I was reading something on allergies talking about how it's not going to be over until like July. I don't I don't know when is the last day for allergies because I've never had allergies in my life and this is the first year and it's really bad, really really bad. I got one k shares of AMC at ten dollars and forty five cent cost. Uh, average, there's no way I could sell. Uh, I hope I get. And at a better price point at this point. 
Look at board and bat. AMCX is up pre-market. Do you think that people are still buying the wrong stock? No news about AMCX. Yeah, I think people are just buying the wrong stock. It's funny because I was, I was watching, I think it was Trey's video where he was talking about AMCX. And yeah, it's up a crazy amount. But I think it's based on the the mistake of people buying the wrong position, which is huge. I mean, if you wanted to buy into this position and people are making these mistakes, then go ahead and, um, you know, get in on those positions because you can increase these amounts. And what you will do is, you know, buy into something that's actually driving, you know, on the way up. And I'll keep that in my watch list just to see what's actually happening here. Because if I find a day trading opportunity with this, just because people are trading this over AMZ, I'll take it any day because you're gaining something out of it. So yeah, I think that's 100% why. I think he's saying Wednesday because uh, GME earnings release. Also Fox Business News will have the special and make it short seemingly in response to CNBC's uh, gap. Algae season, season typically tied to uh, spring season, so yeah, you're kind of screwed till summer. Starts in your area. That, that's crazy. Claire's and D. I've been taking. Uh, I took Allegra, um, which Allegra worked for a little bit, um, and then I actually didn't take it for like. I think I needed to take it like every like 24 hours. And Erica is saying that allergy medication doesn't start working until 24 hours after you take it and um, I'm starting to kind of notice that because it's definitely a lot better than it was yesterday but I switched over to uh, Zyrtec and uh, it's been it's been pretty bad because it's been it just hit 24 hours like uh, or no it still hasn't hit 24 hours uh, since I took it because I took it at like nine o'clock yesterday It takes some time to get into your system, but it works very well for me. Depends where you live, but sometimes, yeah, July allergies could bother. That's crazy. All right, we got 1,200 people in here, guys. Hit that like button. Uh, we have 15 people over in the MP Shorts channel. Uh, thank you for uh, being over here. If you could hit the like button everywhere you are, get me up to 600 likes. Half of what the current viewers are, that would be great. Um, Love how CNBC never makes mistakes when it comes to uh, tickers. But now all of a sudden they put out uh, AMCX up a lot now. Oh, yeah, of course. AMC looks like uh, a black dude from Hey Arnold. Uh, Matt, okay, I Matt looks like, yeah, I do. Uh, what's his name, Gerald or something? Yeah, that's me. Gerald from Hey Arnold. Also get a, a a house filter that filters. I mean, okay, I could possibly do that. I don't know if that's I think I try and spend some time outside. Uh, Zyrtec liquid should work after the first hour. You do need to keep taking it every twenty four hours. Okay, so yeah, I'll I'll, I'll do that. You know, take it every 24 hours. Uh, I doubled down on my uh, MVIS this morning, but I was I was wondering, do you like, or do you think BB is still a good buy? I think BB will still be a good buy. It's moving with um, AMC, and it will increase as AMC starts to squeeze. AMC has not squeezed yet, so when you see that make that huge move, that's the reason, um, you know, you know why you'll see uh bb start to increase with it so i think bb is still a good buy you just need to find the right price point because since we're still not in the squeeze a lot of other things are not going to move um a crazy amount until we see it squeeze because once people realize oh you know what i missed out on this opportunity let me get into this opportunity that's when you'll start to see it really push same thing for zomatica same thing for sos all of those things you're going to start to see it push after the fact hey arnold the goat of Nickelodeon. That was a good show. 
I've noticed the, the tool FYI, the naked naked short special will be will be aired today by Fox Business at two PM with with Wes Christian. You pin it on his Twitter, spread the word. Definitely will. Ten milligrams of Zyrtec. Uh, can you pull AMC pre market back up? Okay, yeah. For some reason, I'm looking at AMC X. Uh, I don't want to make that mistake. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, so right now we're seeing uh, a little bit of a, uh, a little bit of a consolidation here after that large jump. Would have liked to seen uh, create new highs, but it's creating you know higher higher lows, which are definitely good because this is still a higher low. It's still creating a slightly higher low than what it was previously. So that's definitely a good thing. But you are seeing a kind of like a firm bounce off of certain levels. So uh, what's your realistic price potential for AMC can reach? Um, my realistic price potential, I'm thinking if we if we spread the word enough to understand where people will, um, where it can get to, because obviously it can, it can get to 100 or 500K, right? With the basic rules of how I laid it out you can see that it could get to those points that's not realistic though um even something like you know 10,000 still might not be uh realistic um but I'm thinking it could definitely go in the thousands easily um that's where I'm I'm seeing it that's where I'm seeing that a lot of whales will end up selling their position and um the reason why I say it can't get to or it's kind of difficult or uh, not reality to get to 10,000 is because I think whales will sell off beforehand and it whales will define where the peak point is. So yes, it has that potential to get to higher and higher figures, but if whales define where the peak point is, then, you know, if they sell their position, they're giving a lot of ammunition to, um, hedge funds. They're letting them buy it at a lot, uh, lower prices. So they're buying these at lower and lower and lower prices based on the fact that maybe one person, sold um you know a hundred thousand shares or 10 people 10 whales sold a hundred thousand shares so that's what i was going to say is somewhere around that five thousand mark is the realistic ceiling um and then you start to get to uh crazy levels when you start getting above that but um one thousand two hundred or uh, one thousand or two thousand dollars is definitely uh, i think a definite um in between that level but it just depends. Like I said, when people want to sell off, if people start seeing, if people start seeing, uh, you know, 500,000, a million, 2 million, $10 million in their account, they're guaranteed to pull that out. I mean, it, if you, do, if you're not the greediest person in the world, you're guaranteed to pull that out. Whatever you're comfortable with, you will end up making that move. And it sucks to say that because, um, you know, I, I want to, I want to say that the squeeze is going to go to a hundred K but the reality is that it's probably not going to get to 100K. It probably won't even get to 10K just because of the whales. That's why I say that it's better for the situation if more people hold less shares. If more people hold less shares and you sell uh, all of your shares at one point, it's not going to affect the squeeze in a large way. It's going to affect the squeeze in a small way, but then eventually they'll eat up a lot of those shares that you sold and they'll have to buy the other shares at higher and higher points. <coughs> Non AMC holder here. Do I suck? <laughs> I don't. I don't think so. Uh, I think it, it doesn't hurt to you know at least buy you know ten shares. I think anybody that holds any AMC stock, um, as long as you're looking for this to to move and you're with the with the movement, no matter how many shares you actually hold, whether it's one or it's you know four hundred and fifty two thousand. You know I'm I'm one hundred percent certain that you are you are with us and uh, you're looking to gain a decent amount from it and also teach the hedge funds a lesson because one share matters you know what i mean uh two shares matter every single share matters my wife said if amc goes to uh 1500 we are getting married again i'm scared <laughs> that's funny he married Harry again does that mean she's getting a hundred percent it's possible. 
uh, also have severe allergies and, and did allergy shots for six years. I have a ton of food allergies. See, I have no food allergies. I don't know what happened to my... That was weird. Um, I, I don't have any like food allergies or anything. Um, I, this is my first year of ever having any type of allergy issues. So, sorry, I just kicked the camera. Oh, that's the wrong camera anyway, so I turned that one off. I used to hold AMC at $8.67 per share. Well, why don't you hold it now? You sell everything? It's never wise to just, you know, sell everything, especially in a situation like this. Um, thank you for becoming a member. Uh, I'm going to say Connor. Now, can you talk about SOS a bit? Uh, how are you feeling about them now? I'm feeling good about SOS. So I, I bought a thousand more shares of SOS. Where? Oh, it's, it's not the position. I bought a thousand more shares of SOS waiting for this to uh, make a massive move. Understanding that this is probably going to get some activity based on the AMC situation as well. So it's all on that basis of a large uh, push with AMC. But... Um, it hasn't happened yet, so I'm still waiting for that to massively increase. I'm I bought a thousand more shares to lower that cost basis to three dollars and uh, ninety three or ninety six cents. So again, waiting for that to increase. It's gotten over four dollars multiple times. Um, it's come on, Carl, stop, stop, go somewhere. Um, but yeah, I feel. Where, where are you coming from? Go somewhere, man. Stop. Just stop. No. No. Uh, what was I saying? SOS. Um, SOS. Hello, uh, Sto Stozies. Um, SOS, I do feel like that's going to make a, a move to I want to sell at like $6. But I know it has the potential to go a lot higher, especially with the AMC situation, because we know what happened with um, you know this after we seen that initial push for AMC. It went to other positions and it drove this to sixteen dollars and forty six cents. Can this get to sixteen dollars and forty six cents? Yeah, it can get back to sixteen dollars and forty six cents, which will give you a a decent amount there, right? A uh, decent amount of growth. Um, I'm only looking for it to get to about the six dollar, six dollar fifty cent mark, or even um, the eight dollar, eight dollar, nine dollar mark. That would be amazing to see that level um, to where it gets to. So um, that's where I see it. Uh, I see it retesting some of these areas, especially after AMC. But then after that, I see it resettling um, probably around these lower levels that it was at previously. So. That's where I stand with that. Matt, did you comment on how, uh, sorry, where, where's that? On how BB uh, may perform today or this week? Yes, I did. Uh, basically, I said it's, it's basically a follow what, what AMC does as long as we start seeing the same amount of buyers that go into these positions. Uh, so if we're seeing consolidation, we might see the same thing with, with BB. Holding uh, 404 shares of AMC at $8.99. I'm chilling. That's good to hear. Uh, trails uh, of that. We started the newfound allergies. Imagine you never had them uh, all the years you played football outside. You got... Wait, what? Imagine you never had them all the years you played football outside, and now you got them. Crazy, right? Yeah. It's absolutely ridiculous. I've never had allergies in my life. And that's why I was so confused. I was telling my wife, I was like, oh, I'm sick again. And then it went away. And I was like, oh, I'm sick again the next morning. And I was like, what's going on here? This doesn't make sense. And I was like, my nose is completely stuffed. My eyes are starting to water. I was like, this is, 
am I sick or am I like dying here? I don't know what's going on. So, uh, Erica was like, Oh, you probably have allergies. And I was like, I've never had allergies in my life. I'm, I'm certain it's not. And apparently it is. My food allergies develop in college and they can develop at any time. Now my, uh, I'm allergic to most fruit. Melon citrus every, wow, that's, that's horrible. I, I would hate to be, you know, allergic to any type of fruit. I love fruit. I love food because I was, I was a chef for seven years. So, uh, I, I love food. I, I love to cook it, love to create different flavors, all of that stuff. I currently hold 59.7 shares at $8.56. Yeah, I'm I'm all for you. The, if we have more people holding, you know, 60 shares, 100 shares, um, you know, 300 shares or 500 at max, I would say, um, it would be a better overall squeeze. I guarantee it. And people don't understand this, but the higher it goes and the more that people say, you know what, I'm only selling on the, the down tick or the downturn, it's ridiculous. You know, you got to have certain levels to where you're going to take some profit off the table just in case, you know, whales sell at a, um, a, a ridiculous level. Like maybe whales end up getting paid off to sell some of their position. You never really know what could happen. These hedge funds could do anything to basically reach out to some of these whales, sell, uh, sell off some of those whales and basically say, you know what, I'll give you, I know you stand to make probably, uh, you know, $20 million, right? Or, or whatever. And uh, you know what? I'll give you I'll give you 10 right now to sell your position and you'll basically profit the 10 or whatever. You know what I mean? And they lose out $10 million, but then they create a downward uh, tick in the squeeze. So you never really know what could happen. This is why I always say that you should find levels to sell some of those positions, some of them, uh, just so you take some of your profit off the table and your initial investment so you don't get screwed out of your money. And then everything else can sit that's gravy. Everything that I hold here is absolute gravy. I don't care about what happens here. I'm I'm now at a break-even point. So if it goes down to zero, I broke even, which it will not go down to zero no matter what. I profit something off of the table. So I'm okay with what's happening here. Uh, so 700 shares, I'm okay with letting it grow. And I have my certain levels that I want to make those moves at. Um, I'm holding SOS myself. It's, it's like watching grass grow pretty much. Yeah. It's taken forever. Uh, what do you think about CCIV? Um, I liked CCIV at like $19, I believe. Um, I don't know what it's at now. I would imagine, uh, imagine, I would imagine an increase. I like them at like that $19 mark, $16 mark at those lows. But, um, I was trying to find it cr to create new highs, uh, it wasn't really doing that. It started having that double touch point, which indicated a downward trend. And then you've seen this large increase over these last couple of weeks. Know that it's starting to um, reach those levels again. It's starting to get up to those levels again. So if we see a break past there, you might not have another resistance point till somewhere around here, 27 or even 30 plus dollars. So I'm seeing some good movement with uh, CCIV. It just depends on what you really see there. So hopefully... You Hopefully you're good with that. Uh, Jonathan, thank you for becoming a member. Alex Evans, thank you for becoming a member as well. I just joined. Hi, guys. How are you doing? Uh, Connor is fine. How, how do you say it? Is it Lee? Le Scottish spelling. Uh, it's the same as Lee. I didn't want to say it wrong. I'm horrible with pronouncing names. And it could be the easiest name in the world. Sometimes I won't, pr I won't pronounce it right. Like someone uh, became a member that's, her name is uh, Kara, and I called her Kara because I really like the name Kara, and I'm always familiar with that type of name, but that was uh, Erica's uh, biggest flaw with that name because I wanted to name our first child uh, Kara, but she said everybody's going to pronounce her name Kara. And I was like, well, it happens. When hedge funds likely, uh, what are hedge funds likely to cover? I, I know it, it's hard to tell, but can you see anything in the analysis? So, um, it they have they have days to cover. Um, but the the problem is, is that they continue to 
add new shorts. So when they cover some shorts, they add new ones. So when do they physically have to cover? Probably when they get to a point to where they either have to give up or bankruptcy. You know, if bankruptcy is on the table, that's when they start to uh, see that that hit them. So that's the only way that we can really tell is whenever they get to a point to where they're physically just running out of money. I know they're losing billions of dollars every time this price, you know, skyrockets. They're losing billions of dollars. Uh, what's the realistic high for Zom? I think the realistic high for Zom is probably like five dollars or so. Uh, they have a lot of shares available, so understanding the market cap. You probably have to uh, realize what the true price point of that is. And I'm thinking the realistic price point for Zom, you could see it at $5 in the near future, um, but not like right now. I'm pushing for it to get to $2. That's pretty much it. I literally only want to gain about a dollar and 10 cents worth of value, maybe even a little bit more than that if, if it's okay. But um, we've seen it skyrocket to $3 at one point. And um, I will look out for where it can get to. And if it pulls back, typically what I will do in those scenarios is um, if it gets past $2, once it does, I will set a stop loss. If it pulls back and gets stopped out, I gain a profit. It doesn't matter. It's going to be a $7,000 profit if if it does get to that point, though. Um, which will be the second largest gain that I've ever had with a stock. I've been having like a lot of really big gains lately. I don't, I don't usually hold for it. Uh, this long of a period of time, I will typically hold my my. Uh, I was gonna say short squeezes. I was I typically hold my uh, my swing trades uh, a lot less time. Wow, that's the first super chat we got today. Oh, second super chat. Did I miss a super chat? Or did I actually answer? I took three k uh, profit from Doge and bought a hundred uh, AMC at thirty dollars. Still have ten k Doge left. Um, at an average of 20, 20 cents, but basically I got all AMC for, for zero dollars. Good luck today, everyone. That is awesome. That's great to hear. Um, if you can use, if you can find a way to uh, automatically, like you're trading everything on gravy, like that's that's amazing. Like if you fund your whole entire account, like say you end up making 500K from AMC, um, then you end up using that 500k to in invest. Now I understand that you still have to pay taxes, but you could still invest while, um, uh, you know, you're not paying taxes yet. You pay taxes at the end of the year, or whenever the tax season is over. Um, so, yeah, uh, it's always great to be able to have that um, that gravy on top of things and basically be trading on zero dollars of initial investment. Um, eventually it starts to feel like, okay, well now you're not trading on gravy anymore because this is all pocketed money. But either way, I mean, if you, if you gain $500,000 from an investment, um, it's all trading with gravy until like the next tax season. That's when I usually reset things because if you gain a crazy amount, like a million dollars and you keep gaining, uh, more money on top of that, eventually it gets to a point to where instead of that all being like playing with house money. Now in the new year, this is money that you had in the new year. So it starts all over. And uh, now this is not trading with gravy anymore. So you start from, from scratch. Yo, Chef Matthew. Uh, I was a, a sushi chef uh, until COVID hit. Let's get this squeeze on the fly. Yeah, I was a, I was a sous chef for about four of my seven years of, of cooking. And um, I loved it. And uh, as soon as I left, they they took pastas off the off the menu and everything. And um, I loved making all different types of pasta. So I'm glad I left when I did because I if I couldn't have made pasta, I would have been very upset. Like I can I can cook the hell out of a steak and everything, but I just love making all types of pastas, types of sauces, it, the type of pasta. <laughs> Funny thing is I got to correct my wife for the first time uh, this this weekend. She usually corrects my grammar because my grammar is horrendous. Um, but I got to uh, go correct my wife for the first time. Uh, she used the term fish for, um, I forget what it was, but she was talking about a bunch of species of, of fishes. And uh, when you actually have a bunch of species of fish in the um 
in the same area, it's pronounced as fishes. It's a double plural. So anyways, I got to be able to correct her on that. And I was really excited because I never correct her like ever. And she got upset with me, but you know, it's okay. Yeah. At seven, uh, it should really uh, pop guys from all the weekend FOMO. It's, are we seeing anything right now? Uh, 641. <clears throat> Oh, you think we're going to have a massive pop because of that weekend FOMO? That could be, that could definitely be a possibility. And we see brokerages apparently open up at 701, which I didn't know that was the case. I thought they opened up a lot earlier at like six. Um, and then, you know, Weeble obviously allows you to trade at four. So hopefully we see that large pop. Uh, posted Citadel Financial Summary in the Discord General. Okay, we'll have to check that out. Um, as a pretty big uh, influence, influencer, would you <clears throat> beat out to Robinhood asking them not uh, to screw over the users, but in your in your own words, uh, can't pull out of uh, Robinhood. It would take a it would take days for money to, to move. <clears throat> so the problem is, yes, I am. Uh, you know, I have a, a bigger channel on YouTube, but my Twitter is like I have like no people following me. I think I have like maybe three hundred. 300 people that are following me so it wouldn't it wouldn't get any type of type of love from robin hood at all and i don't think it would get any type of love e even if i did have a big following just because we know we don't want them to to screw anybody over we've seen that what td ameritrade uh restricted trading or stop trading in some form or fashion i didn't actually see the full detail so i'm not going to fully speak on it but we did see that they did something there how do you eat your steak? Uh, our friendship depends on this. <laughs> I'll be waiting. I I usually eat it medium rare, um, but uh, I always ask for medium in restaurants because they always under undercook it. So if I ask for medium rare, they they end up giving me rare for some reason. And um, if I ask for medium, they give me medium rare. So I that usually works out. If you ever go to a restaurant and you want it medium well. Um, then ask for it well done. They won't do it. <laughs> that no, I'm I'm lying. The only one you don't do that with is medium well, because well done they will cook the hell out of it. Um, but medium well, um, they usually cook it pretty spot on. I'll upvote that super chat. Hey man, I have a, a question. My current cost basis is uh, for 17 shares. I have each $1.47. Should I buy now or, or when it drops even lower and then the pre-market price now to bring it down to my average? So um, I think it's not going to dr uh, drop too much lower. So if you do, um, I don't think it's going to drop too much lower. But if you uh, do want to buy now, it doesn't, it doesn't hurt to buy some now. You can basically stagger those buys. What I typically do is I'll buy a portion. If I have a full set of how much I want to buy, how much I want to pay, then I'll basically say I, I want 20 shares. I'll buy 10 shares now, 10 shares later, and it does lower that cost average. But to tell you the truth, the cost average won't really come into play too much. You are in the 40s right now, so no matter what, it's going to come down quite a bit. Um, if your overall cost basis is in the uh, 60s, I believe you said, yeah, 61, 47. So it all it really all depends what you want to do. I don't want to give you um, advice because I can't give you advice. But my opinion is, you know, I would always stagger any type of buys. And again, we're gonna see it decrease a little bit, but I'm not sure that it's gonna come back past this level. Maybe not even this level. It might not even come past 46. You might see it. Um, you know, increase towards the end of the pre-market, just like a lot of people are thinking that we might see it increase at 701, then it come back a little bit. Um, and I don't believe it's gonna get past uh, this point. I hope I'm right by saying that. I know we see some, we see some points here to where we show strength, but uh, past this point here. So we'll see how that plays out. Uh, Keelan, thank you for becoming a member. Crazy to still see this uh, amount of shorting in AMC. I'm assuming there will be a lot of eyes on as soon as the brokers aren't allowing shorting. 
uh, of, of it anymore. Yeah. Um, I would agree. And I just hope that there's not too much volume or volatility to it to where uh, people end up uh, or the the platforms end up restricting trading because I don't want that to happen. Uh, medium rare, medium rare, or black or blue. But can you ban the people who... Who eat well done steak? <laughs> Anybody that eats well done steak, you're gonna get banned. No, just playing. I mean, some people just eat well done steak. I mean, I I have my uh, my mom would only eat well done steak, and um, we went out to eat the one day, and I ordered for it. I ordered uh, medium rare or not medium rare. I ordered uh, uh, medium well, and uh, she was like, "Oh, I don't like any pink in it or whatever," and I was just like. Trust me, it's going to be way juicier than what you think. Typically, uh, she'll eat her steak and it'll take her like 17 minutes to chew one piece. And I, I can't handle that. You know, if you're chewing one piece and you have to drink a whole glass of water in order to chew, uh, you know, one piece of, of steak. It's ridiculous. So, it should move, move just a little. I don't know about that. Post some stuff in the Discord about Robin Hood. Thank you. Yeah, if you guys want to join the Discord, there's a lot of great information over there, especially that, you know, EG puts in the in the Discord group. A lot of other people that put in the Discord group as well. Um, we're also going to do a lot of portfolio updates, as, um, you know, of the day to see what happened in the day, how much money, you know, we made, whether it's realized gain or unrealized gain, all that stuff. We have a whole channel for that. So um, we're going to be setting that up entirely and uh there's a lot of great people over there that uh consistently chat i don't really have the time to chat all the time but when i do have the time i, I come by and you know sneak a couple of chats in there or some audio um audio information or something like that so you cook all the flavor out uh, I don't get what's wrong with people. Yeah, yeah, I don't get it either. You're cooking like all the flavor out, all the juices out, all of that stuff. Love the steak discussion. This is awesome. I just woke up and, and couldn't wait to check her notifications. I posted some, uh, I made some, I made in the Discord last night. They look fire. I have to check that. Lance, don't, don't, don't start. Um, what's cracking, Matt? Uh, on top of it, what's your realistic thoughts for AMC today? Um, so based on where it's going, we're seeing a little bit of consolidation. I want to see what happens at seven oh one. Um, apparently that's when a lot of other brokerages open, which I didn't, I didn't know that. So I want to see what happens then to see what that movement actually is. And then we can, uh, kind of predict where that's going to go. It has dropped below this line. We've created new lows here. So it's still on, uh, on a level of, a of ascend, ascending levels of support here. It's still ascending a little bit slightly. We're starting to see a downward move here. So if we're we're looking here, we can see that descending level. It's, uh, come on, sometimes it doesn't move the right way. We're seeing that descending level here, which is indicating that downward trend. So uh, let me do another line here. Come on. Ah, do this. I hate this. I hate how when you get up into these points, I, I wish you can like get rid of this. I feel like you can. Right? When you get up into these points, you can see we are on a downward trend a little bit. So hopefully um, that starts to break that. Um, sold uh, four puts in uh, $18, $50 strike. Hope, hope the apes keep it over. Uh, $50 to keep, keep the eight grand apes strong together. Uh, new assignment for the thank you for the super chat anthony um new assignment for i feel like there were people that became members yes team swap thank you for becoming a member clifford thank you for becoming a member 
uh, bought to make an edge, maybe you should consider taking a part master chef. I could. I'm not I don't think I'm that good. I couldn't take Gordon Ramsay, you know, yelling at me and whatnot. Maybe Hell's Kitchen. I'll I'll do Hell's Kitchen and have him call me a, a toilet brush. Have you ever seen that that clip online? Calling people a toilet brush? Bull flag. Yeah, we have a, a bull flag set up, a, a sort of a bull flag set up. We have that pole here. We have the flag, a little bit of consolidation, more of a downward uh, trend there. But if we look at the overall days, yes, we're in the midst of setting up a, a massive bull flag here. You can see we have this pole here. We can have some consolidation and then all of a sudden a skyrocket. So just wait for that. Right now we're seeing it be um, you know, overbought at the moment. So waiting for that RSI to reset. And uh, we'll see how that goes. We really appreciate hearing my question answered. <clears throat> That's why I like you. I mean, I appreciate that so much. I try to answer as many questions as I can. Uh, I can't get to all of them, but I try and get to about 90%. So if you, if you have an issue that I could not um, you know, answer, then please ask it again. Um, share your opinion on BAM. On BAM investing, or you're talking about where this is going. Um, so based on the last year or so, I mean, it's been nothing but positive. We've been seeing some uh, massive movement. Haven't even seen some touch points of the 200 EMA, which is really good. Shows consistent growth. I mean, it moves like an ETF. If I had to give an opinion on that, one, it has a dividend, so that's always good. If you are going to get any type of, um, you are going to invest in something, I would invest in this long term based on the movement. Um, we've seen a little bit of a dip, um, well, actually a lot of bit of a dip and consolidation to where it did increase and kind of followed that trend and is back on the level that it's supposed to be. So uh, ultimately, I see some some good movement here, and this is not just looking at you know, maybe like a month or a day or, you know, a week or something. We're looking at literally years of movement. So it moves like an ETF. Um, I would say that you probably wait for maybe a little bit of a pullback, a little bit. It doesn't seem to pull back too much. You wait for a little bit of a pullback and then you can get into that position and let it grow as well. So um, I don't know all the details behind it and where it's going to go from here. But I'll tell you, I'll tell you this. It moves uh, pretty great. I love the strength in, in something like this. Okay, good. I, well, either way, I love the strength in this. So if you guys are interested in something that has a dividend, BAM investing is not to be, not to be trusted, in my opinion. What did he say? Did he say anything? I haven't I haven't seen anything uh on it. Let me let me take this off the screen since you're not talking about this. Either way, uh BAM looks like a good position. The fact that it has a dividend and it moves like an ETF either way. So there you go. If you're interested in another position. Sometimes you just throw out things and uh end up getting a lot from it. Uh, let's see. Uh, bull flag on Zom. Do yeah, I think. Where's where's Zom? Give me a second. I'll get into some other stuff. Uh, is it on a certain chart? Well, yeah, we could see this growth, and then we're starting to see that takeoff here up to ninety six cents. That's good. Uh, that makes me up. Uh, I think it might be like six hundred dollars. I don't think it's reset. Thought it was up a little bit more than that. Every every dollar that grows, I gain about seventy dollars from it. Um, put it up here. Did what did Bam Investing say? What did Bam Investing do? Because I I seen that he was uh, live on he or she. I don't know who what the account is about, what the YouTube channel is about or anything. Um, but I seen that um, they were they were live on on uh, Trey's channel. And I think Trey had maybe some issues or something. But I don't know what, what it was all about. 
uh, just be careful. Uh, there's a tick in Midwest if you get. Just be careful. There's a tick in the Midwest if you get bit. Makes you allergic to the protein in red meat. Ah, interesting. What if hedge funds go bankrupt? Do we get more? Uh, do we even get the money then? Yes, we do. Uh, so basically, uh, if they go bankrupt and they have to settle uh, a lot of their their debts and everything like that, they're they're going to have to buy out of their positions or be bought out of their positions in some form or fashion. Um, and this is where uh, it, it has to be bought out in some form or or fashion because AMC is not going bankrupt, right? All the shorts end up, uh, we need to find a way to get those released so they have to cover those. And they, if they physically have to cover them, they have to buy them at higher and higher prices. No matter what the what the ask um, or the uh, bid ends up being, we have to continue to buy those up. So it ends up getting uh, better and better for us, but people can derail it as it starts to go up. But no matter what, they're gonna have to pay more and more for those prices. Especially if they're none available, you know what I mean. He he used to be uh, hedge fund people don't like that. Oh, Bam made some predictions in <clears throat> in front of like sixty nine k crowd and hedgies <clears throat> did hedgy stuff. So so sank Friday and people have been hating on him since. <clears throat> wow. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I haven't, I haven't seen anything from it, but that's crazy. I mean, has anybody been able to get like his perspective from it? Has he came out and talked about it? Was that the reason why he was going to go on, on uh Trey's channel or. He has too much drama going on consistently. Either for attention or his life is really crazy. I think it's the latter. Hearing house. They made a they made a bad prediction, <clears throat> but they claimed it was to, to fake out the watchers. Warren Matthew and family, remember to smash the like button, please. Yes, we have 1,500 people in here. If you could hit the like button, I would really appreciate it. It does get more people in here as we are, you know, uh, approaching seven o'clock here. <clears throat> Naked shorts, yeah. <laughs> you know how you trade. You know how you trade well. Understand human uh, psychology. That's what I I base my stuff on, <clears throat> and I I do well. That's good. To, that's good to hear. I mean, that's that's amazing. If you can basically um, base a lot of your trading off of trading psychology, I think it's. I think it's 100% um, good for your overall trading situation, understand your risk management, your risk tolerance, um, how much you're willing to make, all of that stuff. Because my guy, I've always said, um, buying a position is the easy part. Selling it is the hardest part. What? Sam went on Matt Core's channel and he predicted a, a breakout over $64 on Friday. People who bought uh, options got, got burned. <clears throat> that's well that's horrible i mean well the thing is predictions you can't you can't sit here and take predictions to heart they're they're based on like you, you can't sit here and, and look at the fact that people are if this cat doesn't stop rubbing my leg it's so distracting i can't think can't do anything come here come here come here over here You want love, I'll give you love. I'll give you love if if that's what you want. Um, but yeah, you can't base a lot of your um uh you know predictions on you know what's happening with like AMC because AMC is hard to be able, hard to predict. You can say, Oh, I believe it's gonna get to these points, but a lot of times it breaks some of those trend lines or you know, patterns or whatever. And seeing that it it just it bothers me. That's why I don't want to give a full prediction of where it's going to go. I'll basically say, well, this is what could happen today. 
uh, based on if we see a positive day or a negative day. I'm never going to give like a full prediction of where it will be at. Like I'm not going to say um, it's getting over $70 today guaranteed, like anything like that. You, you got to take predictions with a, with a grain of salt. You're going to get fur all over me, man. This, this cat, all he does is lick me. All he does is lick me. You see that? That's all he does. He's weird. Carl's like, love me, damn it. Yeah, exactly. I tried to get the reason to snap every... Every bone in my ankle and it broke my tibia and tibula. I know what you mean by going down the hill. All right, so let's see where everything is right now. Um, so AMC is currently decreasing. Um, it's currently below forty-seven dollars. Forty? No, it's below forty-eight dollars. Don't don't you dare think about it, man. Oh man, you got so much fur on me. It's currently below. Yeah, currently below $48 um, in the $47 range or area. Um, God damn it, Carl. How did the autocorrect change? <laughs> Wait, where was that? Where was that at? I just lost it. How did the autocorrect change niche to bitch? <laughs> uh, I was in bed for, for six months or so and I had uh, with stocks in YouTube. So that's that's good and you can make you can make money and also watch some youtube channels but i i remember you telling us that remember you telling us what can't prove i got uh, i got sick at work my hospital is, is like you sol Bust out the temptation. That's all he wants. It seems that way. I don't know. Um, well, anyways, um, AMC is right now down, um, down point, basically a half a percent, point six percent, point seven percent. It's decreasing currently, um, and that's never good. But we're starting to see it fall off a little bit, uh, starting to break some of these these lines here uh, in a complete downward moving channel. There, you can see that there. Um, not really the best situation right now, but either or we have a lot of opportunity. Sorry if you're hearing a lot of, um, you know, tape or something because my, I need to get this lint roller off and popping. Uh, let's see. AMCX though, that's up 1.8% uh, in the pre-market. We can see that Bed Bath & Beyond is up. Now things are kind of either slightly up or you know, slightly down, we're seeing kind of like ind indecision. Um, we do have Zometica that's kind of up. That's up to um, uh, 97 cents, which is decent. I wanna see this get up to higher and higher levels. For all the new viewers, Carl is his roommate that licks Matt's leg. That's not the case. If you call my cat my roommate, that's that's who it is. But Carl just licks and licks and licks for no no reason at all. But yeah, remember we're gonna go until um, you know ten o'clock, so we got about three hours. Um, let's see, we don't really have too many things that are actually up. SOS is down one point one percent. Zom is up six point six percent. Uh, let's see where Tesla is. Tesla is down basically a half a percent. We've seen that drop quite a bit from $600 all the way down to 586. I'm looking for a day trading opportunity today. I haven't actually um, had the time to look into it, but um, I'm sure I'll find it easily.
<clears throat> we gained 15 new members today. Thank you everybody that joined. If you guys want to become a member and be a part of the chat, um, whether we're talking about, you know, uh, food or cats or allergies or stocks, uh, you know, definitely be a part of this conversation. Um, also, you can join the Discord group. The link is in the description as well as, you know, um, checking out some of the other links in the description and follow some of my other channels. Like I have an MP Shorts channel if you want to watch that. And if you uh, want to comment without having to pay anything, you can always comment over there. Um, that's more of a, um, a video that you would watch on your phone. So it's going to be vertical. You would see it. It's going to be a portrait and you'll be able to watch it there. Carl technically uh, lives with, with you, so he's a housemate. He pays his dues and licks. Seems that way. Biden can use a, a Carl down the pool. What? Uh, have you looked how much into... I laugh at people with tats too. Like like tattoos or are you saying cats too? I know uh it's early, but I expected more volume after the CNBC bomb. Yeah, where's the volume at actually? I haven't even checked that this morning. Yeah, volume currently is at two million. Um I think it's a little bit higher. If I go to Fidelity, I bet you I'll get a little bit higher there. Let's see, AMC. Oh yeah, 4.4 .4 million. Uh, chickens with needles, how, do you, how long do you have, have, how long have I been trading for? I've been trading um, for since 2014. How long have I been successfully trading for since 2017? Um, in the beginning, I was losing a lot of money uh, based on the fact that I didn't know anything to know about, there was to know about stocks. Um, I just knew that you would invest and you would sell and it seemed easy enough. If stocks go up, you make money. If stocks go down, you lose money. More gambling than anything. I didn't really put in any technical analysis that much. Um, I did trade like penny stocks and more of like a, a YOLO move every now and then, or actually more than every now and then it would pretty much be like every play so i've been trading since 2013 2017 is when i started to actually take it seriously i'm gonna miss you guys i started uh i started back at work today so no more long mornings uh on the live chat oh that's that's horrible i mean it, it's good that you're starting back act, actually at the physical location but you know we're gonna miss you here. There will be there will be other streams that I create. It's not just gonna be the morning stream. Sometimes I might stream at night. Um, I'm not certain how many times I will stream at night during the week because of the fact that you know I'm gonna be streaming early in the morning. So steak and a nice cold. I invest in the summer. It's funny. You'll be retired soon. It's possible. It's possible you could be retired soon. I just know that a million dollars is not enough for you to, uh, you know, retire. I mean, you can basically, um, you could retire and live off the interest if you understand how to use that. Um, and also you can grow your wealth as well if you take, um, the time to put that into training and how to how to trade, you know, stocks and, and all that stuff. And take your ass to work. <laughs> well, only been uh watching a couple of weeks and I finally figured out how to how to join the join the chat. Well, thank you for becoming a member, Johnny. I appreciate that. Um there are some people that have been watching for a long period of time and haven't uh, figure that out or they just don't want to jump on that opportunity yet eventually it'll come to a point to where maybe i say something that resonates with them and they'll jump on board i mean it's only 99 cents 
I make it the very cheap, the cheapest it could possibly be because I want to create a community. Um, and it's better to have a community here that understands what you're talking about or actually sees your point of, of view before they just jump to their own narrative. You know, obviously everyone has their own thoughts and it's great to be able to have a discussion and anybody that is a member, you know, I, I take you guys seriously because if you're paying even something as little as, you know, 50 cents for, for something, um, you're going to be engaged on it. You're going to be into it. You're going to ask questions and all that stuff for the people that, you know, are a member. I appreciate you guys, guys and gals. So it's, it's a, uh, gender, gender neutral term, even though it's not at the same time when you say guys. Um, to be honest, I, I, I like the early AM streams as it helps uh, discipline myself to, to commit. Plus, uh, I'm sure your international viewers appreciate it too. Yeah, uh, again, I, I think they do. I, I think I will do, obviously, the early morning streams. And also, if I have time, I can do like a later stream. If there's something important that happens, I can always stream something, you know. Uh, JP Stone, thank you for becoming a member. Bam is the reason I, I really figured it out. Oh, the like the BAM investing discussion? It was hard as hell to join. Yeah, I mean if you go in the description, it's the first uh first link in the description and you can join. It it should be easier. I watch you more than I watch you more than Hulu and it's definitely worth ninety nine cents. That's awesome. I, I love that. I love that. Funny thing is I think I still have Hulu and I've I haven't watched it in a while. I watch a lot of Disney Plus and um, and Netflix and HBO Max as well. Uh, took me a minute as the option or as the option to join as a member is not showing in the channel option. Uh, well, that's weird. 99% of my TV at YouTube now. Yeah, I think Erica thinks it's weird sometimes when I go on, uh, YouTube and on the TV instead of just going on my phone like she could watch something else we don't need to both watch YouTube uh, all right you got me Matt <laughs> perfect that's good to hear uh, I wonder what match ratio women to I mean I can check that check what the gender is I think I believe so I don't remember how how I how I do it, but I think I can do it. You go into analytics, go into audience. Other channels your audience watches: Matt Coors, Trades Trades, Meet Kevin, Andrew Mo Money. Seems legit. Um, uh, subscribers who turn on notifications: sixteen percent, guys. If, if you're subscribed to me, hit that notification bell and turn on all notifications. It seems like 11% just have notifications on, so about 13.7K. 20, 20,000 viewers um, you know, have all notifications set up. So I appreciate the people that do have all notifications set up. This is always great information. Um, watch time from subscribers. Now, the watch time from subscribers is really interesting. Let's actually... Um, I go into this without showing any uh, too much detail here. Yeah, sure, why not? <clears throat> I'm transparent, right? Here's my analytics. Let's look at this. So yeah, we have 16%, 60.5% that turn on all notifications. Um, we have about 55% that are not subscribed that uh, watch my channel. There's 44% uh, of watch time comes from the people that are subscribed. So I appreciate all the people that are subscribed to my channel. I would imagine that you know, this is because of the live streams that, you know, 44% of watch time is coming from you guys. So I appreciate that a lot. We do have a 12%, 12.5% female to 87.5% male ratio, which we could change that a little bit. Majority of the, uh, you know, watch time comes from the US. And while you do have some mixture of Canada, UK, Germany, India, all of that. And majority of the viewers are around that 25 25 uh, 
year old to 34 year old. Um, I would say majority of them are in, in between these two brackets. So anyways, if you're not subscribed, hit that subscribe button. I would appreciate it a lot. Um, it seems like we're getting a lot of watch time from subscribers. So again, appreciate it so much. I became a member first before subscribing. <laughs> Sorry, Matt. No, it's cool. It's cool. I I was I was a little weirded out the one day because I seen a member and then they weren't subscribed and I was like, how are you how are you paying like ninety nine cents to be a member but you're not subscribed to the channel? You won't know when the when they're coming up. Great numbers. Yeah, it's pretty good. I don't think uh, YouTubers YouTube likes showing how much streamers make. <clears throat> Yeah, um, they don't like to, to show the RPM numbers and the CPM numbers. You can show um, the total dollar amount that you make, which I can show at any time I want to. It's just when you show the RPM numbers and CPM numbers, that's where other, it's like showing other people your salary. You know what I mean? Because technically, like I can make as many videos as I want, but I'll only get paid a certain portion because of the fact that I, I'm in a certain niche. <clears throat> Are there... Any uh, female run YouTube channels or stock channels? I don't know. There's a um, there's a channel um, that's, I believe she was a lawyer. Her name's like Erica or something. And she was doing like stimulus content. And I watched her and I, I think I subscribed to her um, just because there's not a lot of diversity uh, when it comes to like some of like the top YouTubers and I uh, just want to be able to have them, you know, grow. So I support everyone and I support all of your ads, all that stuff. <laughs> so I don't know physically if there's any uh, female stock YouTubers, but I must be the, the 1% Aussie audience. <laughs> I'm sure there's a number of people. How does one uh, even mix up AMC for AMC X? Uh, there's still a lot of people from my broker and AMCX posting that that's from AMC and I think uh, they they have 1 million shares thank you SB for becoming a member um yeah I, I mean I guess you can mix it up a little bit because it is uh close it is sort of similar in I guess where the price movement was you know, getting up to that sixty-six uh, dollar mark versus the forty-seven dollar mark where it is now. Um, so it's definitely a thing to where you you can get it mixed up. But I'll tell you what, I'm looking to day trade this position. If if uh, this is going to increase, then I will day trade it one hundred percent of the time. So we'll see how that moves. It moved from a low of fifty-six dollars uh, the last day to sixty-seven dollars. So if we can have that movement, I will. Put my money into it as a day trade um i live in the area where let me let me change this i live in the area where all all i see is news and all uh, brush fires that's horrible sorry about that uh west nile thank you for becoming a member mbj thank you for becoming a member um should i hold amc or sell you should hold it you should definitely hold it if you ever think about selling um something it should only be a portion because it has a lot of potential and where it can go so um, I don't say that you should you should sell it. When did you buy in to these positions? I just want to know when you bought in because there's always there's always a different uh, story to it because some people may have bought in at seventy dollars or seventy seven dollars or wherever it is, and that's where it ends up getting very tough for you to hold on to the position because you're down uh, what almost fifty percent. You know, that's where it gets really tough for you. You know, I was down quite a bit, not 50%. Um, actually, you know what? I was down 50%. I was I bought in at $12, ended up averaging down um, way lower than where it was and uh, brought my cost basis down to $9 to where now I obviously bought more after taking the initial investment. But yeah, it, it doesn't hurt. If you're ever thinking about this uh, type of thing and you bought in lower, um, then you need to basically get to a point to where you're comfortable. Um, so that's what I would I would say. Um, after watching your stream for for months, finally managed to join. Well, thank you for doing that. I appreciate it. 
Uh, how's AMC uh, X twenty dollars more than AMC right now? The simulation is glitching. Sort of, yes. Um, I would say AMC X just doesn't have that that selling pressure or the shorting pressure behind it, but AMC does have the shorting pressure behind it. And a lot of people are in it making positive trades and negative trades. So you're seeing that effect a lot more than people just buying AMCX. So again, probably going to make that day trade move or swing trade move in AMCX. I don't think it's valued at those points. I don't even know about the company at all, but um, always great to make money and not get uh, hounded for selling anything that you make money on. Uh, it seems like they're trying to... <clears throat> Trying hard to lower AMC before opening. Yeah, they do that every morning. Every morning they're trying as hard as possible to lower it because it got up to $77 at one point and they lowered it all the way down to, I believe it was like 50 something. Might've been like 58 or 52. Wait, what are you talking about? Who quit? What, you quit? No, I don't know. Hey, you were saying that um, if you make a, a million dollars, there's ways to uh, leverage where ways to leverage it where uh, somebody even begin to find out how to learn that. So if you make a million dollars, yes, there's definitely a way to leverage it. This is why I have a shoot. This is why I have levels that's like. Uh, make money member and money makes money member. Understand that money can make money. When you have money, you can make a lot more money. Put it into you know ETFs, put it into an index fund, mutual fund, and actually grow your retirement account in a crazy way without having to pay a crazy amount of taxes. Max out your, four, your um, Roth IRA. Um, and then put money aside into other areas to where you can gain a decent amount. You know what I mean? So you can definitely uh, leverage that, that money um, if you make a million dollars, understand that you are still going to have to pay taxes. But if you can make more money in the meantime with the money that you have in there, it, it will give you so much more. So $500,000 can turn into uh, $2.5 million by the end of the year uh, if you do it the right way. And not saying that you have to go into YOLO plays all the time. You can basically just grow it um, however you wanted to grow it, trading and you know day trading and swing trading and even long-term investing, you can grow it quite a bit. So yeah, I think you definitely can do that. And where would you learn how to do that? I can teach people how to do that here, um, where they can grow their money exponentially. Um, and then you basically build your own investing strategy from there on out. Uh, I love watching your stream from uh, here from the UK. It makes uh, my morning fly as, uh, as I work from home. Kudos. Oh, man, I appreciate that. Thank you for saying that. Uh, Looks like big vibration trading between uh, 47 and 48. I like what I'm I'm seeing a, a long uh, build out and trend reversal and good leverage of support. Yeah, uh, again, I'm I'm just looking for something of a level day because even if it does consider to be uh, level or a little bit of a decrease, a little bit of an increase the next day or whatever, we're seeing that consolidation after this large flagpole that we have created uh, today or not today, uh, this last week or so. We created this large flagpole. If we see consolidation, it's giving us a, a massive bull, bull flag symbol and we can easily um, you know, increase that position where we're at. I don't remember, but um, when it went, I miss, miss some stuff. Aren't pre-market and post-markets a, a lot of algo trading? Um. I would say it's a lot of machine or machine trading. You know, you have the hedge funds, big businesses, firms that are actually, you know, uh, trading and investing into the position and trying to manipulate it in any way that they can. So yes, um, it's not preferable that you would um, buy in those in pre-markets and after hours market, but you can do it depending on how low they make it. Because a lot of times the, the algorithms and all of that will push it all the way down to like its lowest point that it's gonna get to of the day. And then you can buy in at those points and you know see it skyrocket from there. So it could get to those points or it could be a point to where it gets to its highest point like we've seen previously in multiple pre-markets. It gets to $77 or whatever and then decreases a hefty amount. Uh, we're almost at a thousand likes, guys. If you can hit that like button, I would really appreciate it. Uh, get it to that 1,000 
like Mark. Uh, thank you for your answer. I do I do have a, uh, a brokerage firm, Brick Brickridge firm account, which is managed for me, but I want to learn for myself because I don't, <laughs> I don't love uh, other people managing my money. I hear you. I hear you 100%. Um, because a lot of times they will manage it in ways that benefits them. So yeah, I, I agree with you. It's always great to be able to understand what you're doing, what they're doing, and if you can do a better job than they're doing. Because a lot of times the professionals can't even make more than, uh, I don't know, you being blindfolded, throwing darts at, at, uh, at stocks. It really is just like that. And maybe that's what we do instead of, um, Instead of Carl's calls, we've been having trouble with, with Carl lately. He doesn't want to do anything, and uh, he ate all the treats, so it's been very tough to even do anything like that. We have three stocks that we're invested in for Carl's calls, and maybe we can um, change that to where I buy a dartboard and put up stocks on the dartboard and throw it blindfolded, and hopefully I don't hit the wall. Because I think that's a better option than having Carl do this and... Uh, He's just making things difficult. Uh, I thought about getting in uh, nine bucks and figured it was going to uh, be like GME. So I spent uh, 2K on Doge. Either way, I mean, it's great to, you might be talking to somebody else, but it's it's great to buy something, get into something that you believe in. Uh, my dad just gave up. Uh, yep, this is where at once in a lifetime won't happen again. Yeah, I, I think we might see these occur a little bit more often and hedge funds are going to try and figure out exactly where our game plan is on every situation. Then they'll start manipulating things to where um, they change up the situation. Because just know, once we feel like we're getting comfortable to where we start getting back in these hedge funds, they find a way to make money on the other side and still bankrupt businesses. I just agree. Like I was watching... um. Uh, meet Kevin uh, a little bit meet Kevin uh, stream with Trey and Matt and I think their response was great to understanding what the movement is but I also think there was something to add to that where there's a a lot of um, instead of just worrying about how much you know people can make and uh, you know getting everybody profitable it's also about the thought of you know getting back at these hedge funds and understand that everybody keeps questioning the fundamental value of AMC and where it can get to. It's like, oh, AMC shouldn't be up in the $70 mark. Well, we understand that. But the point is, is that AMC should also not be bankrupt. You know, this is a company that's trying to claw its way out of the pandemic and should have received funding on something that, you know, uh, I understand that it would have been very difficult for them to just receive funding because they're not like frontline workers or anything like that. But it's taking away and, uh, like great memories for certain people. Like some of my best memories as a kid were in Toys R Us and movie theaters. And uh, now if they take away movie theaters from me, which literally was uh, the, you know, I don't know, the, the foundation of Eric and I's relationship because we literally watch movies all the time. <clears throat> and I want Harper to grow up on movies as well because movies are, are just amazing stories that a lot of people tell that directors tell and it's just phenomenal um i remember buying four four to six dogecoin for a penny uh thinking of buying a couple hundred dollars worth when it gets in the mid-20s area and sell when it goes back to goes back to 55 cent area smart or dumb no, I think it's smart. <clears throat> so if you didn't just see my video um, recently, I put out a video talking about how I'm going all in on Doge. When it does get down to the $20 area, I'm putting about $10,000 into Doge um, and letting it double very quickly because I think it's going to be a massive increase that we're going to see. So I don't think it's dumb. I think that's probably the best best case scenario. And uh, if it's going to get to a dollar or not, you don't really know. Once we start seeing that drive behind it where AMC um, gets less attention, GME gets less attention, you know, all the heavily shorted position gets left, less attention, you're going to see, you know, things like Dogecoin, ADA, a lot of crypto end up moving. Right now, we're not seeing crypto move as much. I am very cold down here. And uh, Erica keeps turning on the 
the air because it it's it's hot up there, but it's cold down here. <clears throat> uh, just got caught in a an advertising loop while watching the stream. Really? <clears throat> I haven't played an ad in like maybe fifteen minutes. Hey Matt, did you get my my question about uh somebody trying to imitate you getting uh, on WhatsApp? Yes. I, I get a, a ton of messages and I try to limit the spam. And every time I do that, it ends up taking out my own messages. So I can't like uh, put a block on the name because if I put a block on the name, then it puts a block on my name. So it doesn't work that way. Um, also, I can do WhatsApp and they just spread it. Um, so I'll do like um, like block WhatsApp and they'll spread it out and they'll put W dot A dot whatever it actually is. Um, is it spelled with is it spelled like actually WhatsApp? But yeah, they'll they'll put like um, it all spread out with the numbers all spread out so that you can't really you know pinpoint anything, and it just makes it difficult. And it's just the spam that YouTube needs to stop. I don't know how they can physically stop it, but they need to stop it because they're imitating a lot of bigger creators, and it's bothering the hell out of me. Just know that I will never ask you for any type of money. Never ask you to send me any Bitcoin. Never ask you to do anything like that. I won't even ask you to sign up for WhatsApp. Uh, I know there were people that had WhatsApp groups, but now they've suddenly like stopped doing those WhatsApp groups because of the amount of you know, uh, you know, fraudulent activity um, in their comment section. So just know. Just know I will never ask you for anything, ever, besides to hit the like button. If you can hit that like button for the YouTube algorithm, I will be perfectly fine. I <laughs> uh, understand. Uh, I lost uh, 2,700. Very responsible. I do. People ultimately responsible for your own. Yes, one hundred percent. Morning, Matt. Do you think uh, D N N can still grow? Um. Yes, by the movement. Yeah, it's well. It's showing a lot of resistance at some of these points, but either either or. I mean, you're starting to see these levels of um, you know, resistance go higher and higher because this is at a higher point, right? Yeah. You're seeing those go higher and higher. So it's, um, slowly seeing that increase. You are seeing some fluctuation here. You're starting getting to a little bit of a higher point. So you're probably going to, uh, see a little bit of a pullback before it ends up making that increase over another high, you know, maybe getting up into the full, uh, one fifty dollar mark, but you are going to see a little bit of a pullback. I would believe that would be what I would see from the chart based on history. Um, but then again, things could always go differently. We are seeing a very large candlestick here, and that's basically the day. So if we're looking at um, what happened in the day, um, we're going to see that we've seen a, a very large increase from here, which is not typical. So I would probably wait for a little bit of a pullback. That's what it's looking like to me. All right, put some clothes on. Yeah, they put it just like that. Or or they'll do it um, where they put dots in between. Instead of just like WhatsApp, they'll put it like dots in between or periods or, or whatever. And uh, I can't pinpoint anything because anytime I do it, I see a naked arm. Yeah, I, I don't know. I guess I can get a, a hoodie. I guess I can get a hoodie. All right, give me a second. Let me get a hoodie. I'm... All right, gonna keep the 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 top nice and nice and straight, fresh Prince of Bel Air style. Uh, 
five thousand in, in GME and five thousand in AMC support both. That's amazing. Uh, would you invest ten thousand if it's? Uh, how would you invest ten thousand if it's all you had? So if you're looking for 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 ten thousand, you're gonna need to do uh swing trades probably. Uh, you can't do anything worth day trading. I mean, you can, but you have to manage it around um, three trades per week, which ends up being very difficult to to profit. You have to pick the right situation. Um, <clears throat> so a lot of the positions that I'm looking at for like popular positions, if you were trying to trade some of them, um, I would probably go for some of these these meme related positions. So if you're looking at probably some portion in AMC, uh, BlackBerry, I would put some, if you're looking for firm, um, you know, solutions, firm trades, I would probably put a lot into Ride. <clears throat> I'm thinking Ride is going to be very decent since it is, uh, does have a high amount of short interest. So they're continuing to short while this has a lot of buying potential. The reason why I look at Ride is because if I look at year to date, you can see the consistency of the way that it grows. So it has increased to 31, decreased down to, um, you know, 13 or so, increased to 31, decreased down to 17, increased to 31. So you can see that potential to where it can actually get to. And right now sitting at about, uh, what is it, $12.46, I think it's at a good point. I'm just hoping that it pulls back a little bit so that I can get in because now it's on that that rise a little bit. We're starting to see that push. Instead of just seeing this false breakout or this false breakout, we're seeing a little bit more of a push and it's starting to stair step on the way up. So if I can find that pullback to about um, maybe uh, under 12, I will buy into that um, and let that grow. And I'll probably buy maybe 200 or 300 shares. <clears throat> but I think, and I know you're not watching one here, but yeah, not financial advice. Hair looks tight. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, 1K likes should be uh, two. Yeah, I mean, it would be difficult to get there, but I, I would love for it to get to 2K likes. Thank you for saying that. I'm new to trading and need uh, major help. Yeah, I mean, it literally just takes um, understanding the basics. Now, I have a, I have a, um, a patreon level or tier um here and if you don't like it you can always uh um you know cancel whatever you have but basically i have a patreon tier to where i go through um book readings and this 20 dollars per month <clears throat> i go through all the stuff that i have in the previous ones but then also go through um the audio book readings which right now you're going to be able to see that i have um you know chapter one through five already up so if you wanted to go through and watch it, you can go through and watch it. And uh, I'm going to have chapter six um, uploaded today. And I'm also going to have chapter seven uploaded maybe at the end of this week, if not in the beginning of next week. But um, yeah, it's, it's good to be able to understand the basics. To get, to get the basics down is everything. If you get those basics 100% down, understanding um, you know, what your risk tolerance is, understanding um, how to read a chart, what your strategy will end up being, it will be a lot bigger um, and you'll, you'll gain a lot of money from it. So if I, again, if I only had $10,000, those would be some positions that I would put into ride. You know, I'm surprised that Roblox jumped as much. I did put this on my uh, swing trade of the week list and um, I ex actually expected it to pull back a little bit and get below, you know, that $70 mark before you start making that rise. So the fact that we've seen this consolidation, um, kind of more of like indecision, I guess, and then seeing that skyrocket up to, you know, 103 is absolutely insane. Um, with the news this weekend of naked shorts, I expect AMC to test all time high point this week. And I think uh, sooner than later thoughts. Um, I'm not sure if it's gonna happen in the beginning of the week. I would imagine if we are gonna see a positive day, it's gonna be a small positive day, not a very large positive day. Um, you would hope that we've seen a lot of activity in the pre-market in order to indicate that we would see something happen today. Um, we might see a little bit of a consolidation day for the most part from what I'm understanding, but then yes, I do believe we are gonna see a massive increase at some point. Just know that we're set up for a large bull flag. So if we start to see this consolidation here um, where it does consolidate or you know increase or decrease um, above or below or in between these levels, in between, let's say, uh, what, 69 and um, 37, if we see that consolidation in between, we're gonna see that skyrocket on the way up eventually. So 
The consolidation is going to be key. It's going to be really good. I'm off to bed. Just uh, done listing uh, two breaks. Two breaks on eBay? Over 500. Oh, for some reason I was thinking of the actual eBay platform like you were selling something. I was like, what does that mean? <clears throat> uh, stay safe. Good luck with uh, all my apes. Hope I wake up to AMC at 65 to 500k that would be amazing it would be really amazing um cnbc just put out a, a video video about buyers punishing folks what does that mean do i put my my vwap i don't i don't add a vwap to my um my charts i used to look at the v the vwap but i mean it's not something that um i look into every single day and i've had i've had success with looking into that i'm glad i picked up a few shares of roblox yeah it definitely skyrocketed like i, I was surprised very surprised at where it went remember the the squeeze doesn't happen until they they cover all their shorts exactly that's 100 percent um true and what people don't understand is that they're like, oh, you're derailing the squeeze right now. You know, if you end up doing something right now, I think this would more or less be the time where you would do something and then those shares would end up, you know, getting taken up or eaten up by other uh, retail investors. Um, if you wanted to take initial investment or whatever um, and then grow off of whatever is left, then this would be that time. It's not going to derail the squeeze because the squeeze has not happened yet. Squeeze will happen once we start to see them cover. I mean, we crossed it. Uh, oh, we're moving up and increasing in volume. Can we clarify AMC X is nothing to do with the squeeze and is a diversion? Um, I think AMC X, yes, has nothing to do with the squeeze at all. Um, I think that the confusion is definitely giving people some opportunities to grow their account quite a bit without worrying about repercussions for selling at $67 or whatever. Um, but yeah, it's it's nothing but a uh, uh, a sideshow, basically. I wouldn't say a diversion, but it's a sideshow. If they put what now what uh, news channels are doing with AMC X, I guess that's considered more of a, a diversion so that people don't get into AMC um, 100%. Um, but I'm going to tell you this, that if you see an opportunity, you take it. You know, if people are going to get confused with that opportunity, then you take it as a profit and then you could take some of that profit and put it in the AMC if you wanted to. So we need to warn everyone that AMC is not AMC X. I'll be sharing it again on Twitter. It's not. You're right. Uh, there's a time limit to where they have to, to cover or can they hold forever? Um, they, they can't hold forever. They have interest um, and you know, um, that they have to, if, as long as they're comfortable with um, paying interest, I think they can hold for a pretty long time. But <clears throat> what what we need to understand is that no matter what, they're going to take these, these older shorts and they're going to um, cover those and then buy new shorts. So no matter what, they can continue to process, wash, rinse, and repeat. All right, we have 1,125 likes. We have 1,764 people in here. Thank you guys for joining me on today, uh, you know, with AMC. <clears throat> this isn't, that's not the name of the show, but. <laughs> uh, price action on AMC X is 100% hedge pumped. They did the same thing in January. Well, I'll tell you what. Um, I, I would agree with you. Um, but like I said, if you see an opportunity in growing your, your money by a hundred percent, uh, then go ahead and do that because what you could do is quickly grow that in AMC X and then put your money into AMC. So the squeeze, uh, comes down to, uh, who holds out longer as we, as the whole, oh, oh, or them. <clears throat> Yeah, this yeah, that's exactly where it's at. Is if we're gonna hold out at the longest point we can, um, just know that, like I said before, whales define where the squeeze will go. It looks like we broke out of this. Um, we broke this level of 
uh, we broke this descending level of resistance here just recently, slightly. We slightly broke this control uh, horizontal line. We broke that level just recently. We started to pull back a little bit. Um, let me delete that line. And we're starting to see this upward trajectory here. Everyone got their, their naked shorts on Friday. On, wait. Everyone got their naked shorts on today. Oh, like like clothing. Everyone has their naked shorts on today. Uh, I got on pants because it's freezing down here. I got on pants and a, and a sweater because it's cold. I literally could put on a parka. I don't know why she's running this this air like this. It is so cold down here. Can't handle it, man. I can't handle it. Uh, so is option trading good, good or bad? Uh, I got no clue how to do it. Anyways, um, so I think it's good. Um, I haven't ever looked into it until recently, and I wanted to save it for like a a really in depth interview to ask all of my questions as a newer. Uh, <laughs> as a newer, uh, you know, um, investor in options, you know, I wanted to basically take everything with a grain of salt, learn as much as I possibly can and ask all the questions I can, um, throughout that, that video that I was going to create. But I think options are good. I have looked into them a little bit and, um, wanted to make, uh, my first options trade. Just imagine the, uh, Wife is the same way. I put the first new pants on. A call that told you I saw a good vibration between uh, 47 and 48 after uh, a build out trend reversal. <coughs> Feels good to, to have an accurate forecast from time to time. I hear you. I hear you. It's always good to have some sort of an accurate forecast. It, the only thing is, like, all of them can't be that way, and it sucks, but. You know, as long as you limit your risk, you're fine. I don't know what this cat is meowing for right here. Being weird. Just imagine uh, the lives this could change if it hits 10K. It could be uh, generational wealth for some families. Yes, 100%. And, and also it could be for, you know, people could end up, you know, spending it in, in weird places. So I want to be able to spread the word and let people know, look, you can actually live off the interest. You can actually, you know, uh, build something nice with the amount of money that you have. Don't just go out and buy a home or buy a car, you know, make your money, make money for you. If you make a lot of money from this, then that's a sign that you should be doing something with that money. And it's not necessarily just donating to charity, which is always a good thing to donate some to charity, but, uh, it's, it's better if you, it's better if you just, um, you know, make your money, make money for you so that you can build generational wealth ongoing. Um, good morning, Matt. So I'm in Doge at 36 cents. Uh, should I pull out and wait till it drops below 30 and get back into it or just let it ride? That's totally on you. So it's not, it's not certain or it's not 100% uh, confirmed. I don't think that's doing not 100% confirmed that it's going to come back uh, to 30 cents or 20 cents. I'm saying if it does, that's when I'll go all in on Doge. So I'm I'm not saying that it's confirmed that it's going to come back there. You could see a massive breakout beforehand. But right now, uh, cryptocurrency is really standing still. It hasn't been moving too much uh, as of late. Eventually, we're going to see that make huge moves, but it hasn't been moving too much right now. <clears throat> oh Matt, nice haircut. Thank you. It's not I didn't get a haircut. I literally just um instead of curling it up, I just picked it out. So I had to make it a, a box box cut. I got like something in my hair. I wanted to see the RSI uh wait. I want to see that RSI uh, a little cooler. 
at a higher level of support saying around 51 uh, 51 dollars and 50 cents or 5150 uh that cat sounds like it's it's killing a mouse her, her meows are loud her meows are loud uh carl's meows are like nothing <clears throat> uh, can you talk about ma and ema and why do you choose them and have uh, them on your charts every uh over everything else. So typically, the reason why I will have these is they're a far distance apart. So a lot of times a 200 EMA will indicate the long-term action of things. So we'll indicate what's going to happen um, as you're looking out multiple uh, minutes or hours or days, whatever the candlesticks that you're looking at. Um, while the short-term um, you know, moving average will actually tell you um, what's happening in a short range. So for most cases, you'll see me play like the pullback. If there is any type of action that's below this line, I will play the pullback that's generally, um, you know, uh, a normally traded stock. Like AMC doesn't trade normal right now because of all of the activity. Um, but if you see it pull away from the 15 moving average, you know that the back to earth line is the 15 moving average. So I always play that as a pullback and as a level of um, resistance really, even though it might end up not resisting at those points, I play it as a level of resistance to say if it gets, if it's pulling far enough away from there, I can basically meet halfway or I can meet all the way at the 15 moving average. Um, so I'll use that as a short term indication as an unweighted moving average. This is more of a weighted uh, moving average to where you would be able to see farther out in the future. It's very simple to use these and not overcomplicate things. Some people will add more indicators to add multiple levels of resistance or support, um, but I don't ever use all of those. I'm looking for one um, and then pretty much looking to trade um, in between. So if it pulls back, let's say right here, let's say if it pulls back to uh, $46 and the uh, moving average is up in this level of $47. Now I'm only looking for it to gain a dollar here. I know that it's pulling all the way back at the point of using the RSI and the um, indicator. It can tell me that it is oversold. I'll probably buy in at this large candlestick, gain about 80 cents and gain probably $80 out of that trade. That's typically what I'm looking for when I, when I look at my indicators and I use a very simple method rather than using a complicated method and make it too complex for the normal person. <clears throat> my three-year-old has his plans for a uh, medical school. AMC needs to needs to pay off um i would i would let you know your three-year-old you know pay for medical school himself um paying for paying for a kid's college now i know for me i i will have it out there i won't even let neither of my children know that their college is fully paid for there uh, with the 529 accounts but I want them to work as hard as possible to, you know, get put on a scholarship or, um, you know, get grants. There are people that have gained hundreds of thousands of dollars in grants. I've gained myself over twenty thousand dollars in um, uh, grants and uh, scholarship money. So, I, I feel like you can you can find a way to do that, and there are multiple opportunities out there. It's just people don't search for them. They're not, they're not, you can't really find them either that well. I know I used a service called, uh, uh, I think it was Scali. I can't remember what it was, what it was called. It was an app that I found based on Shark Tank and I found a lot of opportunities and it would have been a lot more if I would have actually dedicated my time to doing it, but I didn't. Um, let's see, AMC news for today. We don't really have much AMC news for today. My eyes are starting to water, getting itchy. Here we go. Allergies can develop in later life persistence exposure to a uh, known allergen, such as pet dander. <laughs> you very well could have developed an allergy to your cat. I don't think so, um, because the allergy uh, probably started. No, I don't, I don't think so. Because every time I'm around them, I'm actually okay. Like, I'm clearing up actually right now. But... Um, I thought I was allergic to my dog for a little bit, but she's okay. And I was like, even if I am allergic to my dog, I, I would still keep him. I would still keep her. <coughs> Walmart is going to be uh, is going to be closed 
on Thanksgiving. Nice. No uh, Black Friday shopping. My mom has made me uh, take her the last 10 to 14 years. Jeez. Um, really? They're going to be closed on Thanksgiving? Are they, are they going back to the traditional way of Black Friday being Black Friday? I'm lucky and blessed. My kids uh, will have their college paid for by my uh, reservation. Yeah, I mean, it's it's always good to be able to have that opportunity to pay for your kids' you know, college. Again, for me, I'm not going to let them know that it's paid for, and uh, eventually they'll figure it out. But um, I would like them to work as hard as possible to get to that point to where they could pay for it themselves, and then the money that's in their 529 accounts is theirs. If they go on a scholarship, um, they get that money uh, tax-free as well, so they don't have to worry about the taxes. They can use it on anything school related if they wanted to. <clears throat> are there a lot of fifty dollar call options expiring soon? It seems they they are trying to desperately hold uh, below the price of fifty dollars. I'm not sure. I haven't checked that, nor do I know how to check that because I wasn't an options person. Now I'm starting to get into options, so eventually those will be the questions that I can't answer. But I don't physically know. Yep, saw it on the on the news, and I know uh, what they're doing. What do you think about uh, dig digibyte? Is it a I don't see that. All right, I gotta get to gotta get to bed. I'm really <laughs> going to bed this time. Have fun and most importantly, stay safe, y'all. You too, Johnny. Thank you for stopping by. Uh, thank you for watching. We have you one video now stating this for your for your kids. Yeah, I, I'm probably gonna have to delete this so they don't see it. I bought AMC at $3.58, sold half, uh, want to buy back in next dip. I mean, if, if you're comfortable with what you actually, you have, just let the, let, let the rest ride. Seriously, don't even worry about it because then once you start to buy back in, <clears throat> you start to worry about where it's gonna get to. You know, let the rest ride. Um, if people are, you know, I understand that I will, will love for people to buy buy in more, right? I want new people to buy in more. You know, people that can let it sit there. And if you're comfortable with letting your money sit there, you're the best candidate for letting this continue to squeeze. So in, in my opinion, and this is only my opinion, is if you did end up taking half your, your um, uh, maybe your initial investment plus a lot of profit, you know, Keep whatever you have in there and let it let it ride. I don't know how much you have, but let it ride. If it's over like 500 shares, you're good. I'm telling you, it's going to get to massive amounts as long as we continue to see this, um, you know, go. You know what I mean? Um, and this is the best route. More people hold less shares, it's better. Um, if if less people hold more shares, then somebody can derail the squeeze with literally one trade. So don't want that to happen. Uh, 83,000 options expiring on the 11th at $50. There you go. <coughs> Pump and dump time. We don't have AMC, but we, we do have uh, Odin? Odin? Subsidiary of AMC. Well, that's good. As long as they're you know affected by it, you can still make money on it. I totally respect what you're, what you're saying about making uh, them work for their education. I saw a lot of a lot of my uh, peers piss away their their parents' money. Yeah, it, I I don't want to I don't want to have that happen. You know, I was I grew up with you know one respecting parents. Wow, we're seeing a large amount of movement for AMC. Look at this. <clears throat> look at this. Uh, look at the length of this candlestick. Do you see that? That is huge. Down to $46, all the way up to, 
uh, forty nine dollars. We see that that stop hunt right there, huge stop hunt. We have nine hundred and thirty thirty five thousand shares worth of volume. <clears throat> What's a better investment, Facebook or AMC? Um, a a long term investment, I would probably say, uh, Facebook, AMC is probably more as a short term investment at this point, because if you're buying in to basically say that the value will stay at this point at least, that's not that's not true. The true value of AMC right now, if we're talking about fundamentals, not based on the squeeze, which should be part of the fundamentals, um, uh. AP, 8 p.m. brokerage opening. Oh, okay. So we're seeing a large amount of movement there from 8, 8 p.m. That's what it looks like. Yeah. Um, if we're talking about, um, you know, growing a position, I would say Facebook looks a lot better than what AMC would be as a long-term solution. Um, but AMC right now in the short term, a lot better. The potential is just there. I'm so glad I'm finally a damn member. <laughs> Well, that's, that's good to hear. It, it's a great community. I mean, there's a lot of people that answer questions. You talk back and forth. And, um, you know, I'm always here to, you know, answer as many questions as I can as long as I know the answer. Am I dumb for only buying 25 shares of AMC? No. I mean, if you had the money to do it, there's a lot of people that only bought a, a certain amount of AMC. No matter what, you're you're making some money off of it. And I think... That's the best bet because what you can do is literally hold out for the entirety of the squeeze and not care about, um, you know, derailing the squeeze at the top because you won't. You have 25 shares. So that 25 shares can be worth, you know, it gets to $1,000, can be worth $25,000. If you only bought 25 uh, shares, how much did you pay for it? Like $25? Paid, <laughs> I don't know. I'm just joking when I say that. I can obviously do math. I don't know when you bought it, but um, like if you bought 25 shares, it's not a lot of money that you spent to gain a potential of $25,000, if not way more than that. So I'm shorting AMCX, not to not to death, but uh, just to what the I'm trading the accident on the buys. I should have gone to AMC. I hear you. But I think you should just find a way to, if you find an opportunity, um, I think you should just make money with their position. <clears throat> if you make money with both positions, then that's fine. I don't think you should ever, I don't think you should short it because it's going up, you know, too fast and you'll probably end up losing some money and, you know, it's not the best situation that you want to do. So just, um, I would consider trying to one, one up them by not shorting the position, but one up them by making money on the position. Because if you make money on the position here and make money on the position there, you're doubling down on, um, you know, making money and getting out the hedge funds. I've been watching for months now, and I, I wanted to make sure that it was a right fit for me. But you explain everything, um, absolute best man. You're truly, you truly do. I appreciate that a lot. That means so much to me, you know, to hear that because I try to, I try to do my best explanation or give my best explanation for everything um and some people might not like it some people might love it some people might you know absolutely hate it and unsubscribe but you know that's the risk you you take <clears throat> and i'm here just to create you know conversation and basically get a second opinion as well no way do i know everything i will not say i know everything and this is why, you know, I come out clean and say, look, I don't know about options. I don't just sugarcoat it and say, you know what, <clears throat> let me research options and make me sound like an expert. No, I tell you what I actually know. So if I know about uh, day trading, I will tell you about day trading. If I know about swing trading, I will tell you about swing trading. So uh, thank you, Nighthawk, for becoming a member. Uh, so if we can hold over 50 and bring all those contracts, uh, we, can, we can make a large jump upward. I would imagine, yes, we can. Um, anything helps, man. I'm down for shorting on, on margin. <laughs> what are you doing, Daisy? Stop. Uh, there are call options last. I, I checked going 
all the way up to 143 that was expiring the 11th AMC is saying is this thing being the top weighted stock in the Russell 2000 true don't fight the the trend I might uh, do butterfly option I want AMC X you know, buy a couple of calls going up and and short going back down that's that's smart whatever you feel is the best option for you definitely do it um i bought 75 shares of amc at two dollars and 22 cents sold uh 50 at 14 dollars and 86 cents feeling uneasy i mean no you made way more than your your profit or your uh, initial investment back <clears throat> but I know what you mean. You missed out on all this opportunity, but just as easily as it could have went up, we understand that they could have easily brought this back down. This was all FOMO buying and you know uh, the lack of shorting as much. The shorting um, volume has gone down as it's gone up. We understand that we have seen millions and millions of shares get shorted, but the percentage has gone down. So they haven't been shorting as much with all the, the buying that was going on. But if they continued to short, it could have easily went down the opposite way. Or they could have stalled it. It could have easily went down the opposite way. So it's not a bad decision that you that you did that. You know, you have 25 shares left. Let it sit there. Let it ride. It's going to be big. And you'll be able to make a decent amount of money from it. And yes, you will always have that feeling of, hey, I could have made a lot more. But it, you don't want to be greedy in the stock market. Whatever you can really gain, uh, then then gain it. I don't want to be greedy because greed creates horrible opportunities for other people and then also can, uh, you know, destroy your account as well, especially with normal day trading and swing trading. It can destroy it. Um, Matt Perry. Matt Perry. Can be a port Portuguese name. Is that your, your heritage? Um, I, no, no, I am, I'm black and white. I don't know if I'm like German, Irish, anything. Um, I don't know what I am over on that side. I haven't done like a 23 and me. My mom, my mom was adopted. So, uh, she didn't know her, her real family. So no. Um, I'm kitten fishing with, with a wiggles wool. <laughs> Matt, every two months, I, I rewind, I remind everyone here, they have unlimited short shares. Yes, exactly. They can short as much as they possibly want to. Um, but we still have. Vortex showed 40% of of uh, shares covered last week. Does that take any away from the squeeze? There, there's no possible way that they were covering 40%. There's no way. The interest rate was going up the whole entire week uh, besides, I think, like Thursday and Friday. So there's no possible way. It's an absolute lie. Um, but, yeah, if that was the actual case, then yes. I think that's just not... I know you meant you meant worm. You were fishing in one of those poles. I I have that for Carl and <clears throat> Daisy. It looks like we're starting to see a little bit of an increase here. <clears throat> you have that for Carl and Daisy, and they end up going nuts over those things. We we're starting to see a little bit of a an increase. A lot of buying action. Um, and then it went against us. Oh, now it's starting to go back. <coughs> so we wanted to break over those levels, this um, previous level of uh, support. I guess we have to kind of move this up a little bit, see where it's going to resist, probably somewhere around these areas. Yeah, it's definitely going to resist somewhere around that area, $49 uh, dollar area. Hopefully we can get up to that $50 mark. Uh, we have 2,145 people in here, guys. If you could hit the like button. If you want to join in the chat, it's you just become a member. It's a members only chat, and uh, it's ninety nine cents. I make it very very cheap, you know, so that we get rid of all the fud, 
all of the spamming, everything, and it's just real people that want to ask real questions. <clears throat> hey, Matt, I remember you uh, making a video on cost. Did you ever sell your position? Um, uh, or are you still holding? No, I sold my cost position. So I, I sold my cost position um, and made about $900 from it. Um, I, I sold it somewhere up in that, I think it was 27 or 28 or something like that. Um, made a decent amount of money from it, was looking for a good opportunity, actually day traded again and made about, um, I think it was like $300 on it. So this should be a lot higher. I don't know what's going on here, but yeah, um, made about $300 on it. <clears throat> no, oh no, it was $700 and I made the first time and I made $300 the second time. So I made $700 on the, the big trade and uh, $300 on the day trades that I made. So yes, did sell my position. <clears throat> I'm looking for a good opportunity to get back in because I know it does move a lot. Once you start seeing a lot of volume with costs, it moves quite a bit. So um, you can see that moves that move uh, dollars very, very quickly. And I love positions like that because literally within ticks, if you start to see this upward movement here, and I know this is AMC, but if you start to see this upward movement here, literally within like one tick, it'll jump up 50 cents, which is a huge move because <clears throat> if you see it jump up 50 cents and you're holding 100 shares, you know, that's easily $50, right? So if you see it con consistently grow up, then you're going to gain a decent amount of money from positions like that. Steven, thank you for becoming a member. Hopefully I'm saying that right. Is it Steven? Steven? Steven. All right, I'll, I'll say it like that. Let me know. If, I think it's Steven. <laughs> Uh, uh, yeah, the Ortex data just exposed the lie. Uh, it's almost a sad commentary. I uh, find it. Yeah, I, I would agree with you. Uh, holding 320 shares of AMC at $8.65. Looking over <clears throat> my taxes a lot. Saw I bought some at $5.51. Only 20 shares that a day. Anyone have a, a time machine? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I was looking back at those times and I was like, oh, I should have bought more. I mean, I had other positions that I was holding and I just want to diversify a little bit, but I should have put like 90% of my position into AMC and then I would, you know, be able to make that move wherever I wanted to, but I've been able to double that in investment, if not triple the investment uh, by the time it got to uh, quadruple the investment by the time it got to 20. <laughs> So then I wouldn't have had to take out that much. It would have just been my initial investment. No matter what, that was my that was my plan. Uh, something, Matt. What's what is the end prediction for today uh, on AMC? I think it's going to to move a lot on the upside at the open. So I I hope you're right. We have broken past that level of um, you know resistance there. So that's really good to break over that level of forty nine dollars. We would love to see it break fifty dollars or so. Yeah, fifty fifty dollars somewhere to break this point right here. So let's let's look for a horizontal line. Here we go. So we're looking for it to break that point. Forty four ninety nine or forty forty nine ninety nine. Um, sounds like an infomercial. We're looking for it to break that point. If we can see it break that point, we're gonna see some uh, really massive movement there. So I'm really hyped uh, to see if we can get to that point. We're starting to see a little bit of a pullback right now. Um, I gotta delete this one. And hopefully we could stay above that, that level of resistance there, create that as a level of support. Maybe it can bounce off of it. You never really know. Or would you put a large sum on a dividend stock like AT&T or Main Street? Not AT&T. AT&T, I believe, just cut their dividend. Um, not cut it completely, but I think they cut it by a certain percentage. So, uh, yeah, I I wouldn't do it on AT and T, but yes, I always put large positions on dividends for um, my long term investing. My long term investing. Um, if you if you wanted to become a member, Stephen, uh, click the link in the description, and you'll get there a lot better. Because what what you're probably doing is sending a super chat by accident. Sam, thank you for becoming a member. Um, what was I going? What was I coming from? Um, but yeah, I I do put. Uh, a lot of money into dividend investing. 
just because it's great for the long term, long term, long term, long term. Um, I follow the Mark Cuban method really um, because Mark Cuban will not invest into something. Um, well, he came out and said it. I don't really know his investments, but I follow that because it, he won't invest into something that doesn't pay you something. Because back in the day, you would get value from a company um, based on like you're owning it. You feel like a part owner. Um, now you don't really get anything. It's like owning a stock. You're just owning a stock. Um, so what he likes to get is something that does pay you something consistently, whether it's, um, you know, uh, quarterly, monthly, you know, whatever it ends up paying you. So yes. Uh, your show is, is awesome, man. Glad I found this. I joined uh, last week, but, uh, could not find the new, the new live stream anywhere. Do you think it's a good option to buy more AMC today, even at 50 or under? Yeah, I, I think uh, to buy more here is good. You just need to find the right point. So even if um, it, it just makes you feel a lot better. I know you can buy at any point you want to. And people will say, hey, buy, buy here, buy here, buy here. You know, you can buy on the way up, whatever it is. But it makes you feel more at ease if you can buy at the lowest point and have it grow, you know, from there and not have to worry about it ever touching that point again, because if it touches that point again, you start to get antsy and you start to worry about whether your investment was a good point. So I would say you definitely wait for the, the best opportunity to buy in wherever you feel is the best opportunity, because if you start seeing these upward trends, then you start to go, okay, now is the right time. But really you left out all of this on the table here. So, um, Basically, you have all that room to come back to 46 to, you know, 43, wherever it comes to, and that ends up being an issue. So uh, find the best opportunity. I think it is a good good option to buy at those levels. Um, Sam, did I say that? Thank you for becoming a member. Uh, Visual Energy, I appreciate you. Thank you for becoming a member. We got 25 new members today. Um, can you explain what the dividends do? So basically they're going <clears> to <throat> you're they're going to pay you a certain amount for owning their stock per share that you own. So uh it it's just giving you money now you have the option to reinvest it back into that usually you have the option to reinvest it uh back into that uh single position uh or you can just uh, have the money put into your actual account to invest other places. So um really it's the company's way of just saying like thank you for being a a shareholder. Thank you for, for being a part of this company and, um, doing that, they give you, let's say, you know, 10 cents per share that you own, uh, then you'll gain a decent amount. Now it's not something to where you physically can live off of the, the dividends until you get to a certain amount, which is like, you know, probably hundreds of thousands of dollars. But, um, it's something where you can gain something consistently every month and not really have to worry about the true growth of the stock. It doesn't have to move like an ETF for you to gain a crazy amount or move like a Tesla for you to gain a crazy amount. You can gain something from the growth of it, maybe, or you can gain something from the dividend from it. So um, I think it's, I think dividends are amazing. That's why I always invest in them in my long-term positions in my Roth IRAs. Does it make sense? You don't have to pay anything on the on the dividend income that you get. Uh, Steven, thank you for becoming a member. Thank you, makes sense. No problem. <clears throat> Check out the AMC Discord for, for Ortex data. Uh, okay, yeah, let me post it in there. Okay, I can't see anything there. Why is that so, so small? Like, can't even increase the size. I'll have to, I'll have to check it out. Oh, I can't see. The one screenshot was okay. The other one wasn't. Um, your interest change is uh, it decreased by 17.95%. That's got to be a lie. That makes no sense. They didn't cover anything. It increased on, on Friday, right? And it, they didn't cover anything. It even decreased in the after hours market. That's an absolute lie. Are they trying to manipulate this area in order to um, have us sell some of our positions? It like things aren't lining up. And when things don't line up, we don't we don't sit here and say, oh, okay, that makes sense. Like what? Rose dropping the stocks. I gotta update those. I'm gonna update those today. The um, the emojis today. I'm, I I need to put some some new emojis. I'm gonna have one of Carl one of Emmy 
and I hope that I can get to it. Uh, but I need to, I need to do it. I'm going to have one of Carl, one of Emmy have, um, one of like profit hands or something. Jamie, thank you for becoming a member. I like to buy dividend stocks and sell slightly, uh, out of the money, uh, when he calls going right after dividend payments. That's smart. AT&T will cut dividend in mid 2022. Oh, okay. I thought they did cut it in half already. <clears throat> if you're, if you're new to the, the group, welcome. This is the best teacher for, for newbies. Totally unbiased opinion. Thank you for saying so. I appreciate that. I'll tag you on Twitter. Okay. Ortex only accounts for 85% of all data. It's still 85%. I, I don't think that there, there has to be something going on there. 2.5K viewers. Let's go. Yep. Uh, hit that like button. If you're in here and you're watching, you enjoy the content, hit the like button. It does help out <clears throat> with the YouTube algorithm. We also have 18 people over on the MP Shorts channel. If you guys want to um, comment, you can go over there or you can go to Twitch. We got 14 viewers over on Twitch. I'm sorry if I, how do I become a member? Uh, you only become a member on YouTube, not on Twitch, but all you have to do is um, click the link uh, in the description on YouTube. It's the first link in the description and you'll find that. Uh, thank you, Matt. I've learned a lot from you and we'll be able to uh, let us know the current shorting status of AMC. I can let you know the short volume. I don't really have the, the short, uh, too, much, too, uh, too much short interest numbers until I get it pretty much from other sources. To AP here, if naked shorting is um, untraceable, then who those naked shorts covering? Wait, and who those who those shorts covering i don't know what that means <clears throat> liked and smashed the like button thank you i appreciate that that means a lot who enforces it i don't know the answer to that because since i don't know too much about it i mean it's something that they obviously know about it. They're going to come out on CNBC talking about naked shorting and actually mention the term. Next thing you're going to know is they're going to they're going to uh, state, oh yeah, ladder ladder attacks, and we're going to be like, oh man, oh man, nice Fortnite. Thank you for becoming a a member. There's a guy named uh, on Twitter who uh, partnered with with S3 and State. Less than two million short shares were returned last week. <laughs> so they shorted out all those shares last week, and less than two million shorted shares were returned. Keep in mind, keep in mind, um, let's look at some of the volume. If we can say that only uh, two million shorted shares were returned the last week, and you want to look at the AMC short share volume here just to get an understanding of it, right? Um, you know, Friday alone was 65.8 uh, million shares, shorted shares. That means that only 2 million out of that 65 million uh, for last week was returned, right? So then we look at we look at all of the other days. Let's look at some of the other days. Where, where are they actually at? Uh, right here. When you look at some of the other days, previously, short volume, 102 million, uh, 162 million, 97 million, 135 million, 212 million, 114 million. This is absolutely crazy to say that um, literally within a week, um, you only had 2 million short shares returned and you had over, it had to be over, I don't know, uh, 400, 400 um, million shares worth of short volume. It's absolutely crazy. Uh, Debos, thank you for becoming a member. Um, Medic Pisces, thank you for becoming a member. <clears throat> So it, it makes n no, no sense. I'll give you permission to use my likeness for, for an emoji. Let's get on Martian Ortex of pitchforks and torches. <laughs> They're still shorting the, the heck out of AMC. So who cares if they return any? <laughs> well, just to get an understanding of that, I mean, if they return two million, right, then they're shorting the heck out of it. Like they short over 
400 million shares in a matter of a week. That's a little ridiculous. Like, I wish I can create a, a title about that, but I feel like I don't know anything that I, anything that I post like that with shares, people think is a negative. So I don't ever put that in the title anymore. They're naked shorting shares. <clears throat> yeah, that has to be 100% or not 100%, but like at least like uh, 40%, if not way more than that, naked shorts. I'm a spiritual YouTuber. All right, well, well cool. It's great to hear. <clears throat> they will continue to short. I agree. All right, let's see. What, what are you saying over here? All right, so we got 2,529 people in here, 1,500 likes. I appreciate everybody in here. Anybody that comes through that wants to, you know, watch and be a part of it, you know, we have a great group of people here. It's only 99 cents to join. I wish that I could cut it off at a certain amount of people so that um, we don't get overwhelmed. Um, I think right now we're still below like 600 members. So uh, we have enough to where we can create a very good conversation, have enough people here. Um, but if you guys want to become a member, it's only 99 cents or $1.99. Um, we're constantly updating things on those levels. You need a Melissa Lee emoji. Uh, they absolutely are doing everything to keep this below $50 in the pre-market. It seems that way. Every single little thing. They get up to $49.55. Uh, they keep it below. Um, you know, $49.20. $49 <coughs> oh, jeez. They even keep it low up here. So, yeah, they're trying to keep this below $50 as, as best as they possibly can. The volume today. Let's look at the volume for amc because i have the volume on weeble but that's not accurate in um one i timed out that's not accurate um when you when you look at that usually fidelity is a lot better uh 9.9 .9 million shares worth of volume versus the uh 4.5 million shares worth of volume in weeble so we're sitting on a good spot. They're really trying to uh, pull us down. Uh. <clears throat> Followed by Trades Trades and Adam Aaron. Justin, thank you for becoming a member. Bless you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, signed up for both uh, YouTube accounts. Uh, heard good things. Thank you for, for saying so and, and for, you know, subscribing to both. I appreciate that. TD says 9.92 million. Yeah, that's what, that's what AMC says. Or sorry, not AMC. <laughs> that's what Fidelity says. I'm not losing it. I'm not losing it. I'm fine. Uh, we have 15 people watching on Twitch. Thank you for watching over here. If you have any questions, make sure to put them down there. I will um, you know, try and answer them and go back and forth. If you guys want to follow me, definitely follow me over there. Um, Gold Tank, thank you for becoming a member. We gained 32 members today. I appreciate all the new members <clears throat> and all the uh, you know existing members. Again, we're trying to build this community as best as possible. And um, this is the way that we do that. I'm only streaming until about 10, so I'm sure people are going to, um, you know, hop off before then because I'm, I'm positive, you know, Matt Kors is going to be live, you know, before I hop off. Uh, let's rock this today. I'm going to buy uh, 500 AMC today. That's amazing to hear. <clears throat> Make sure you find the best point, though. Find that best point, get in, and, uh, you know, hold. So... Uh, I can't believe how many people watch and don't subscribe. It's crazy. I mean, some people just don't, uh, some people um, maybe don't like what I'm saying. 
and some people do like what I'm saying, but they just need more reassurance. I, I, I understand where they're coming from. I've watched channels for months uh, at some points and I didn't subscribe until I realized, you know what, what they're saying, I need to subscribe right now. Why am I not subscribed? Why am I not getting updates? <clears throat> so eventually it takes time. Oh yeah, he's up there with, uh, with Trey and Matt K. I appreciate that. Now, uh, what do you know about Fern? Thanks. I can't say I know much about him, but let's check what, what's actually happening. Um, it, I shouldn't know much about him because I don't follow penny stocks that much. Um, I've been burned in the past by a lot of penny stocks, but what do I know about them? Not too much. We've seen a massive amount of growth <clears throat> back <clears throat> in, uh, in March. Um, and we've seen that grow consistently all the way up to about one penny, almost hitting two pennies, um, and then decreasing quite a bit. Um, it looks like it's kind of falling off here, and you don't want to catch it on on the downturn. You want to wait until you see some sort of consolidation before you can actually see that skyrocket again. But right now, it's looking like it's falling, um, and you might want to wait if you are looking to get into it. So I don't know any news on it to why we would see that increase. But it doesn't look like this is the moment to when you would get in. If I was looking at any chart set up and I seen this, it would not be something that I wanted to make a move into. That's just my opinion. Now, if you have your you have your own opinion, then definitely um, you know do what you feel is best. But that's just my opinion on where it is now. Uh, Khalid, thank you for becoming a member. Yeah, bro, you're. Your channel is is awesome. You Trey and Mass Investor are my top three. Yeah, I've watched uh, Mass Investor like a couple of times. Um, he came over to the the stream and uh, you know showed some love, so I showed some love on his stream. <clears throat> I've noticed a lot of times people who uh, I am subscribed to. Uh, Wait, what? Don't show live to me? Don't show live to me. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. Don't show the live to me. Um, uh, I have to just click on the channels to see it. Uh, do you have um, a lot of notifications on? Like all your notifications? Because if you do, then you should be able to be good. This is why I watch you. You're, you're real and honest. You do uh, care about people. I'm sorry, I cannot see this. You do care about us people and, and do not know, <clears throat> that do not know much about investing. Yeah, 100% true. <clears throat> um, if you don't know about investing, I, I care about everybody that um, you know doesn't know, um, that wants to learn. I wanna teach people because if we all learn about investing, it makes you know everything better. You know, it makes your life better to where you can, you know, um, invest in places and understand where you can put your money after you retire or put your money um, while you, you know, are in the form or in that process of starting to retire. Maybe you want to retire early. <clears throat> you know much about MVIS. I don't know much about their history, their their news. I know historically for, for me, um, what I typically do with, with trading is not really care about the news too much. Yes, if I have some sort of a catalyst, you can't really get away from that. Um, and I'll, I'll be okay with, with that if I am looking at that specifically, but I don't know much about where they can go with like mergers and, uh, a lot of news behind them. Um, right now, I mean, they're up seven, seven point four percent um, went up to a high this morning of 22.99%, which is, or sorry, not 22.99%, $22, .99%, $22 uh, dollars and 99 cents. You can tell it's, it's been a, a long, uh couple of days my allergies have been acting up for a couple of days so yeah um but yeah 20 22 dollars and 99 cents it got to a high of right now currently at 21 dollars and 67 cents seeing a little bit of consolidation hopefully we can see some more increasing we're seeing a massive move in the pre-market so i would expect we're going to see more of the same when the market opens we're seeing a lot of things turn over and uh, turn a little bit positive instead of a little bit negative. I know Zom is starting to decrease a little bit. It went all the way up to 98 cents, and now it's down to about 94 cents, which is not crazy, but seeing how you know it closed at 90 cents, it's still up 3.5% is fine. 
I would like to see a lot more of a movement. Omar, thank you for becoming a member. <clears throat> I see what happened with GME. Got pissed because I, I missed out. Decided to try and, and learn stocks. Stumbled uh, upon your channel and have been a huge fan for about four months now. I've learned so much from you. I appreciate that a lot. That that is that is the best message you know I can receive, <clears throat> is that um, you know you were new to investing. You actually got burned because one, you learn from your mistake, and you're able to take a lot of information and trying to understand how you can fix those mistakes. So, um, and not only am I happy to hear that my channel has been able to uh, you know give you joy information. Um, also a community slash family. Um, and I also like to hear that you learn from your mistakes. That's, that's the most important portion. Um, as when I first started trading, I made so many mistakes, um, lost a ton of money on penny, penny stocks and realized that I was making a, a stupid decision, um, you know, in investing in these without actually breaking them down. And uh, decided to, you know, write them off altogether. And I started finding some success with, you know, uh, either just some heavily traded, some vol volatile stocks, some small cap stocks, mega cap stocks, whatever it was. And I, I found my groove. And it's great to be able to see anybody else find their groove as well. So uh, 75 shares strong uh, here for AMC traded uh, last week, three to four days and invested in profits. So nothing to lose. Let's go fellow apes. I like to hear that. That's what I, lo I love to hear that. Um, again, I think the, the more people that hold less shares, the better. <clears throat> if you are a person that is a whale out there, yes, you, it, you may be looked up to by a bunch of people, um, you know, and have, you know, a hundred thousand shares or, you know, 200,000 shares, but you're ultimately going to be the problem at the top. You know, when you sell your 200,000 shares, that that makes it a very difficult situation for everybody else to make money, you know? So um, I, I'm all for it. I'm all for, you know, you investing into certain positions and, you know, gaining as much as you can. But it, it's just so tough to see a person that has so many shares and saying that they're probably gonna either sell on like at the peak or on the way down. You are that whale that will define what the peak actually is. <clears throat> if your peak is $2,000, that's what the peak will be. Do you know what I mean? Uh, the channel is great. You seem like a, a solid dude. I think you should uh, consider more about uh, options there. Integral part of situation. Gamma uh, squeezes will probably come before the short squeeze. In my, Yeah, I agree with you. I think I should learn more about options. That's why I'm starting to take that leap. I wanted to wait because I was supposed to have like a, an interview slash video that I was going to record on vacation next week about options, but I really need to um, put more emphasis and more... Um, uh, time into understanding options right now and i did take a little bit of time in going into some videos it seems like all the videos are really in depth to understand options and not lose money and lose your investment the only thing i really like about um options and and sort of dislike is that you can only lose what you put in but then you can also lose your entire uh, initial investment do you know what i mean <clears throat> so so it's like a positive and a negative at the same time but uh, I'm I'm starting to get more into options, and right now I'm just understanding calls because I don't want to have to do any puts. <clears throat> but you're right. You're absolutely right. I bought 119 shares of AMC at $32, but uh, did it on M1 Finance. New to investing, I just found out uh, they have rating windows recommendation. <clears throat> um. I mean, it, it's tough. Uh, the squeeze hasn't happened yet, so you can always move your, your money to a different platform. I don't know about M1 Finance. I haven't used it at all. I think I downloaded an account, but I haven't used it. I, I like to use different trading accounts, and I've used most of them that are out there. And even when it comes to previous trading accounts like Scott Trade, you know, I, I used some of those accounts. So um, I would say there's there's... I don't think the squeeze is going to happen right now. So if you have any time to to move, then you can move it. Just uh, move it to the right platform, a place that can actually, um, I don't know, receive the money a lot quicker. I would say Fidelity, TD Ameritrade can probably uh, receive the money a, a lot quicker. Um, for 
Weeble is going to take a little bit longer. I'm pretty sure that's the case. Uh, but I do like Weeble as a, a general platform. So if you want to transfer it to a Fidelity account, open up a Weeble account, understand technical analysis that are over there and how to how to build all the tools and everything um, in a chart. And then once the squeeze is over, move your money over to Weeble, then I would probably do that. That would be my uh, opinion or my recommendation. Um, I was like you, I've lost a ton of money from penny stocks or any cheap stocks last year this year i've gotten i've gotten better yeah that's the thing you always learn from your mistakes and if you don't make mistakes you're not learning if people win after win after win after win they're going to keep playing these plays until they lose bigger and bigger and then eventually they're going to lose everything that they gained over their previous years of gaining money <clears throat> so you have to lose to understand you know how to limit losses and you know how to how to make money effectively right so That's what the vet been doing, uh, trading options and uh, getting stocks made six, six k off a of four hundred dollar investment. That's awesome. I I love to I love to hear it, love to see it. Uh, I'm happy with eleven shares I have at uh, nineteen nineteen dollars and forty two cents each. <clears throat> yeah, again, I think I think having uh, more people with less shares is going to be really huge. Whether you have, you know, one share or you have 500 shares, I think it's going to be really good. I think I would consider that like less shares. For people that have, you know, thousands and thousands of shares, um, it ends up being a difficult situation because then you get to a point to where it's like, all right, what are you doing with all of your shares? Are you selling all at once? If you sell all at once, then you might actually create a lot of fear. Um, in some of these prices that are going up. Because remember, <clears throat> as the hedge funds are paying more and more for these these shares, um, it's gonna start to uh, you know, decrease if we sell a crazy amount. But the squeeze hasn't happened yet. So for people to say, um, oh, well, the, the point is to only, only hold right now, <clears throat> that's not the case until the squeeze actually happens. Once they, once they get to a point to where um, they have to start buying shares is where more people are starting to buy um, and taking those shares away from hedge funds. Are you still waiting for ZOM to fall more? No, I bought in more of ZOM. I bought in 4,000 more shares of ZOM at 82 cents. Um, I'm waiting for that to actually increase at the moment. So I'm done buying more shares of ZOM. I think um, I, I'm so tempted to make it an even 10,000 shares, but... You know, if it does drop more, then I'll do that. TD Ameritrade has a good faith act that lets you trade uh, with money while your deposit is pending. Yeah, well, I think this is a transfer, so it's not really a deposit for that that person that's trying to transfer their money from M1 Finance. I lost four thousand dollars while uh, was deployed. Um, yeah, but learned so much from it. That's. That's amazing. If you can learn from anything, it's always a good situation. Multiple accounts with, with up to 50 shares is not a bad idea. You're right. You're right. It's not. Because then you have multiple people that are basically holding those. Now, um, you have to treat them differently. Do you have a certain level that you want to sell each one at? A whale selling has always been a risk with the stock. Absolutely. Uh, whales define where the peak is. 100% of the time, whales define where the peak is, especially in situations like this. <clears throat> it's just like going to get a, uh, going to get the casino. You can't uh, go in there thinking you're going to win because that never happened. Never happened. Sometimes it does. Sometimes it don't. And more times it, it don't. Yeah, you're right. You're right. It's just like a, a casino, even though this is more of like you have. It's not necessarily a gambling because you you understand the detail behind it and how you can get to certain levels. <clears throat> so it's less like gambling, but uh, the overall squeeze is more like gambling because you never know what the whales are going to do. You know, whales, like I, I keep saying, whales define where it will get to. And if we can, if we look at this and we go, all right, um, where can this get to? 100K? All right, what do retail traders have to do in order to get it to 100K? Well, you know, we have to hold a certain amount. And if we're looking to take any type of profits, we take very small profits, 10 shares, 20 shares. Okay, done. 
Now, what else needs to be done? Whales, they need to hold on or they take a very small, uh, small profit. Um, it can it be done. Who knows? Whales already have been seen the, the show or to sell at uh, $36. So I'm hoping that we don't see a massive amount of whales just sell off thinking it's not going to get to 100 because it has so much potential. But whales are just taking their money because of the fact that maybe they invested $500,000 and they tripled, quadrupled, quintupled their money, and now they have $5.6 million. So many people with, with so much money think conservatively to where they're going to basically take that five, that $5 million and just pocket it. And I, I hate that, but I mean, it kind of is the way to, to think for people that do have money, they wanna conserve their money, they're very greedy, <clears throat> and they'll do it. That's why, they're, that's why they invested $500,000 because they're very greedy. So they wanted to gain more out of the situation by investing um, by investing more. You know, if they can invest, it's just like uh, with Warren Buffett or anybody you watch um, that does long-term investing. The reason why they want you to go into these mutual funds and index funds is because they're doing the same thing with more money. You're investing $1,000 into an index fund, they're investing 10 million. What's going to make more? The 10 million. If it grows 10%, they're going to gain a hell of a lot of money compared to how much you gain off of $1,000. Same thing with the billionaires. Billion, uh, well, obviously Warren Buffett's a billionaire, but investing a billion dollars, they're going to gain so much more than you investing $1,000. So while you gain pennies over here or while you're eating the crumbs over here, they got a full uh, five course meal over here. You know what I mean? So uh, it, it it sucks to know that, but I, I guess that's the way the world works. If they know that they're going to double their money, they're going to put millions of dollars into there. What's your realistic uh, end target for AMC? I'm thinking um, if we see whales hold on, we could definitely get into the thousands. Uh, below five, um, in between um, probably one and two. <clears throat> that's a realistic end price. I would say uh, more optimistic is probably 10. Uh, if we can see people hold on, but I guarantee if we have people already like, you know, selling off this early and people that invested, you know, $500,000 or however much into it and looking to double or triple or quadruple their money, um, that's basically going to make them um, close to a billionaire if they do that. So we have 2527 people in here with 1600 likes almost 1700 likes if you could hit the like button would love to get to 2000 if you guys can get me there i would really appreciate it <clears throat> i know i'm going to drop viewers as soon as uh you know everybody else goes live so uh hit that like button on the way out if you do end up doing that and we'll have the the normal group here whoever becomes a member you know we'll have that normal group here options that expire <clears throat> end of day friday when do when do they cover um, I'm not sure how to answer that question because I, I don't know about options. I'm, I'm horrible with options. Um, and I don't really know what most of that sentence means. <laughs> no, I'm just playing. I know what, uh, uh, options. I know they expire when they expire Friday. I just don't know what you mean by cover. <clears throat> Why is GME kind of sleeping compared to AMC? Well, AMC is playing catch up, really. Uh, GME is only <clears throat> only sleeping, not making a huge amount of moves because AMC is kind of at the forefront. It's the it's the lower priced option. So people are going to invest more and more into the lower priced option. It's just how it works. And then if AMC wasn't there, when AMC gets to $300 or so, you're going to see a lot of people probably invest in other options, other opportunities as well, because a lot of people missed the opportunity there. So they're going to go and say, you know what? Ride looks like a great opportunity. Let me go into ride. And they're going to go into ride. And a lot of people are going to make those moves as well. And uh, you're going to see that skyrocket. So <clears throat> there's going to be a lot of opportunity elsewhere, but it's only because of the fact that AMC is lower cost and uh, it looks like it has more potential. Smack that like button. I agree with you uh, on the prices, uh, price targets. That's good. It's good. End of day price target. Um. Oh, end of day. Uh, I thought like the end, like the price target. Okay. Um. 
Well, let's see where AMC is right now. It's at 2% up. We are seeing it level. I'm thinking we're actually going to see something level, something really flat. Um, I would love to see something increase today. Uh, uh, but I think we might see it end at a flat point. We might see um, a rise. Uh, but again, I think it's going to end at being flat, you know, somewhere around maybe 2% up or 2% down, somewhere around there. <clears throat> Thank you for answering so many questions. I mean, that's what I'm here for. You guys are, you guys are here to, you know, uh, you know, ask the questions and you're wondering what's going to happen with AMC. I'm hoping that I can give you the answer that you, you deserve, but you know, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of variables here and, um, seeing all those variables, it's hard to really answer every single question, but I just try to do the best that I can. And I love to create this community because if I can't answer um, an options question or whatever question, <clears throat> then somebody else can answer it as well because there's a lot of people in here that are that are educated as well. I mean, I wouldn't say that I'm the the best person for everything. I'm not. I would never say that. Um, I don't know everything. I, I try to learn as much as I can, but I don't know everything. <clears throat> Yes, and they should uh, have already bought those those shares. If not, uh, to deliver. Matt, trust me, please. Go to the pharmacy and get some Zyrtec D. I did. I have Zyrtec D. You want Zyrtec that is uh, behind. You want the Zyrtec that's behind the counter, not the one in the store. <clears throat> please try it. Trust me, you won't be sorry. The options for expire on Robinhood and auto sell. Uh, in the event that you your total gains are the same, aren't the taxes the same whether you you sold in one trade and trade of three trades? Yeah, the taxes are the same. I'm just saying that um, create different scenarios, different um, opportunities. I know there was. Uh, Maybe this was a while ago, but um, you said you have AMC shares in multiple accounts. I believe that was it. I say that you should always have different opportunities and understand which one you want to sell at what point. Uh, because if you want to sell them all at the same point, then that doesn't really um, help out the overall situation. You know, because the overall situation is having more people hold less shares it creates a, a longer life for the squeeze. Because you can sell 50 shares here, it won't really affect it. You can sell 50 shares here, it won't really affect it. You can sell 50 shares at a different price, it won't really affect it. So that's what you really want to do. But then the people that sell 10,000 shares at the peak, you know, that's where it ends up derailing a lot of things. So that's what I was thinking. That's what I was saying. So hopefully that was the case. I am starving right now. Funny thing is I had a banana. Usually I don't have any type of food at all. Literally just checked my, my mail and got my stimulus. I guess another $1,400 worth of AMC. That, that's awesome. That is, that is pretty great. Are you guys getting another $1,400 stimulus? I think that was the third one. Robinhood has been selling mine at 2 p.m. for some reason. <clears throat> so we got about six minutes until a lot of people probably drop off. Um, so make sure you guys hit that like button. We almost have 2,000 likes. I appreciate you guys. Anybody on uh, Twitch? We have 13 people on Twitch. Uh, what do you think of SOS? I think of a crypto rebound, uh, the stock will fly. Options are pretty cheap and <clears throat> and could make good profit. Yeah, I'm thinking SOS is going to be uh, pretty big, especially with AMC, you know, maybe pushing attention to other stocks. So I think SOS is going to be uh, pretty large. I'm looking for that to go up to about six dollars. Um, and if it goes well above that, I'll set my stop loss at six dollars just in case it pulls back. Um, but if it goes well above that to like eight dollars, I'm OK with that. But I'll probably sell somewhere in between. I won't sell at the peak point because I don't want to wait it out for that long. 
and I only care about, you know, making a decent amount of profit. It's not something where I'm holding out for, you know, it to quintuple or anything. That would be great for me to get um, investing $6,000 and gaining $6,000. That would be amazing, but uh, I don't know. Only looking for it to go up a dollar so that I can gain about $2,000 uh, worth of value from that. Because I've been holding it for a little bit. So holding it for this long, really you need to gain a certain amount of value out of it or else it was kind of a dud. <clears throat> John, thank you for becoming a member. All right, so someone asked for an explanation of the Russell 2000 here. So um, the Russell 2000 um, index is a commonly used uh, benchmark for uh, mutual funds that identify themselves as small cap stocks. So something like a, um, you know, Mavis, uh, I believe AMC, I'm, I'm not 100% sure. I know they, they've added a lot of shares. So but basically that, uh, that applies to a lot of these to basically see the, the movement there. So from what I understand, so it's really applying it into a different situation uh, so that you can just get another form of analysis on your positions. Uh, do you have any AMC options that expire this Friday? I don't have any options. I want to. I want to make my first options trade, but I haven't done that. So uh lo-fi prince thank you for becoming a member i appreciate that i live in honolulu hawaii and was uh mcdonald's yesterday and four random customers were all talking about amc it's getting huge man <clears throat> yeah i love hearing about it i walked i walked past somebody and um i heard somebody talking about doge amc about a lot of different things and i was just like this is amazing this is an amazing time to be a person that knows about investing because if you're a person that watches any of these channels whether it's my channel you know matt's channel trey's channel mask investor wh whoever you actually watch whomever um you'll be able to you know talk about that and be like look well actually um this is what actually happened uh watching from malaysia every day i appreciate that uh thanks for all you do for the community thank you you know i try to do as much as i can and i appreciate any type of um you know appreciation um what can you realistically see amc to uh rise to people saying 100k but too many factors align uh could you see this hitting a uh, thousand based on uh or it's covering yeah i can see it hitting um a thousand um i can see it hovering between a thousand and uh two thousand somewhere in between that mark as like a realistic uh target because of the fact that uh, we're probably going to see some whales that sell off and make it a horrible situation for people that are holding less shares but it gives you the best opportunity uh to make a decent amount of money whether you hold uh 25 shares or you know 1600 shares i it doesn't really doesn't really matter but you can gain a lot from it now if i see this pull back a little bit i would love to see it pull back so that i can get buy more shares i would love to buy more shares i said if it pulls back to ten dollars if this physically pulls back to ten dollars ish 12 15 whatever i am selling every position that i have and i'm buying amc a lot of it and then i'm gonna uh make that move again um and uh you know take initial investment and then ride the rest on the way up and it's gonna be a lot more, but I'll ride it on the way up and then probably uh, sell portions on the way up, not large portions, just very small ones. Um, and then we can go from there. But I don't, I don't really see it pulling back. I can't say that I do because it's, it's showing a lot of strength at these levels. So I don't see it pulling back unless they had some sort of large, like bear trap set up, which you never really know. <clears throat> 
15 MA only uh, just below the 200 EMA, uh, RSI below 40. This is a decent position uh, to be in for the open. <clears throat> yeah, you're right. Um, well, RSI is now, has now increased quite a bit. Actually being to a point to where it was over, almost oversold or overbought at one point. Now at 68. So we are starting to see some movement there. So that was a while ago. Matt, I bought a, an option that cost me uh, $55 three weeks ago and made 3200 last Friday. Yeah, I see a lot of opportunity in options. And every time I see it, I'm always like, ah, why, why do I not, you know, make those moves in there? But, you know, it's just something that I was never used to. But, and that's where the saying comes, you're used to what you're used to. And it's always great to learn um, something new. Or I paid uh, 150 for it. Either way, you still made a lot of money. It doesn't matter. Lose 150 to gain three uh, 3200. I'll take it any day. <clears throat> when is the the last time you actually saw a stock go f from what AMC was at and then hit 1K? N probably, probably never. However, you don't see short squeezes that often, if ever. You said a realistic target was around 1K. When do you see uh, that happening? Sorry, this is already discussed. So <clears throat> it it all depends. We have to figure out when they're going to cover. We might see this break 50 at the moment unless it resists again. Did it break 50? Oh, it did break 50. Okay. It broke 50 by a candle wick, so that's good. That's really good. Then it broke past that um, actually whole like pre-market resistance. So that's good to see it break past that point. Love that, love that, love it. Um, but yeah, it, it all depends. Um, you can see it get to those points, but it really all depends. Um, you know what happens with the uh, short sellers and everything, because the short sellers have to start to cover, and they're saying that they're starting to cover, but it doesn't make sense. They're not actually doing that. So. It's it's tough to basically say that it's going to happen at this point because you can't predict it. If you're a person that says you can predict it, you're lying because you can't. Hi, Matthew. I have uh, 12, 1,200 or 12,000 Dogecoin, which is kind of uh, stagnant right now. I have uh, no AMC. What are your thoughts on selling Dogecoin uh, to buy AMC for a short term? That's totally on you. I mean, that's totally on you. I'm not going to sit here and tell you to to buy it, um, to buy it up, but it, I can't, I can't give you that advice nor opinion. I mean, if it was me, um, I, I can't, I can't give you that advice or opinion because I, I would always have some in both. You know, I always want some in both and, uh, I believe in both pretty much equally i know that dogecoin has less of an increase um potential for but amc has way more of an increased potential but it might take you a longer time to go through with that amc stuff so that means that uh dogecoin has all of this ability to grow especially in in a time period to where uh, you know crypto is is still huge right and also it's moving 24 7 so it's not something that you have to wait for pre-market or anybody to really uh, break down any analysis. It's always moving. So it's so tough. I'm sorry that I can't give you any type of advice there, but uh, yeah, you, you do what is best for you. What happens when, when the coverage is, is dropped of a share? I, I'm not sure I understand. The options getting expensive fast. I've I've heard that, that they've been getting very expensive. Thank you, the truth hurts for becoming a member, and uh, Des YouTube for becoming a member as well. Cleaning up the the garage while I listen to you, Matt. I appreciate that. Hey, hey everyone. Uh, I appreciate the insight. Thank you for for joining as a member, and thank you for letting me know that you appreciate it. Um, up twenty percent on CCIV. I'll be doing, uh, I'll be doing sell put options to collect more shares, at a cheaper price, or collect that premium. That sounds like a great idea. Whatever helps. 
whatever helps the best, you know? I think Matt doesn't realize how many people put uh, put him on the, the background. And I do all of that work. I may not uh, get to answer some uh, get to answer some and usually uh, creeping and listening. <laughs> well, I, again, I, I, I really appreciate everybody that watches um, and that listens to me um, because nowhere did I think that I would have this type of uh, following when I started YouTube. You know, I, I obviously was um, very ambitious um, in the beginning, but as I started to see the slow movement of it, I was just like, I would be happy to gain, you know, 10,000 subscribers. That would be amazing. And to get up to 100K, 120K at that uh, is amazing. And it's all, it's all because of hard work. Like, it didn't happen overnight for me. Um, so, again, I appreciate being able to build this community because if it wasn't for you guys, I obviously would be no me. So, um I emailed Michael Burry and asked him uh, for some pointers on how to trade, and he actually responded to me. Can you believe that? I, I don't believe that, no. I don't. Did he respond to you with any tips? I almost wish that crypto would take a dump because I, I got computer parts. I've been working for nine months now. And are impossible to get because of miners. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, the same same way with me. I want to build a new computer, but I can't because that's why I haven't made that move. I would have been built a new computer, but I physically cannot do it because of the fact that um, all, all the parts that I want are just way too expensive or they're just sold out everywhere. So I don't, I don't know. If I try and buy it on eBay, it doesn't, doesn't work out because they're just too expensive over there. Good morning. My my other stocks are on uptrend this morning. Uh, hope hope it lasts through the open. Yeah, I hope we see something uh, massive happen. Like Zometica is actually dropping down for me. Um, you know, obviously AMC's up, so is GME. But uh, my Romeo Power's up, my Ethereum's up. Everything else is down though. I was able to get a profit out of ride and a profit out of cost. So I was out of those moves. I was happy about those. Um, made a total year to date for costs of about two thousand, two thousand dollars, two thousand something dollars. So I'm I'm happy with that. Ubo TV, I should be up total year to date somewhere around maybe four hundred dollars. But I think I'm I I wanted to get into that position as well. Uh, I wanted to start a YouTube channel myself. Uh, what is some advice you can give me? Um, I mean, just start. That's the main thing. Some people will say, oh, well, you know what? I need everything to be perfect. If you have a phone, um, then start. You know, you can get all the extra stuff. I have the links in the description. I don't know if they're still like valid. I haven't changed them in a while. But uh, links for like tripods, microphones, things like that. Very cheap stuff that you don't really need to spend a crazy amount of money on. You can probably get started. If you wanted to do it a little bit more professionally, you could probably get started for like, I don't know, $100 at max. Uh, it might even be less than that. And if you wanted to start right now, as long as you have a phone, just start recording and you can actually upload there. And if you have a computer, then you can start getting more technical with it with a lot of the uh, editing and stuff. Blackberry, sheesh, what's Blackberry doing? Oh, it's up 4%. <clears throat> it's starting to make a move. That's good. That's what I like to see. Again, I'm looking for some great moves here so that I can actually, um, you know, day trade maybe BlackBerry and probably cost. What's cost doing? This is Omedica. Tesla's down. SOS is up 0.5%. That's good. Rocket, horrible. Ride is down 1.5%. Uh, MVIS, though, that's making a, that made a decent move. It's starting to consolidate, though. GME is actually kind of leading right there, getting up to $256. Uh, providing value is more important than the setup. Yeah, 100%. Um, I wanted to do, if you guys are interested, if anybody's interested in like any type of one-on-ones or, you know, um, just understanding 
you know, stock market in general, or even, you know, building a, a YouTube channel or, you know, just one-on-ones in general. I can do maybe a Patreon level to that <clears throat> to where we can actually have um, one-on-ones. I was thinking that that could be a good, good tool. Oh, it looks like that closed down. Don't mind Thor in the background. Again, oh, if you guys want to, uh, uh, you know, join the last level of Patreon, you can join that because we have the, uh, I don't know why Weeble closes down so much. Uh, we have this, uh, the How to Day Trade for a Living book that we're going off of. Um, we're going to be reviewing. And when we review that, we're right now in chapter six. I'm going to be uploading chapter six today. And we'll be uploading um, chapter seven maybe later this week. So if you guys are interested on how to day trade, you can definitely see that. We're starting to see some really good movement with AMC right now. Um, a lot of green movement. Uh, MVIS is pissing me off. I, I needed it above $25. For an option or for like, you bought it above $25. I got into Dogecoin when it was under one cent. And I got more on the way way up i have 10k at an average cost of two cents <clears throat> can we get can we get a dollar already yeah it definitely has that, that possibility to get to a dollar it's just so tough we hit 2,000 likes guys i don't know how long ago we had 2,000 likes but thank you uh for being here and getting me to 2,000 likes and you know watching and becoming members and all of this other stuff you guys are amazing and all the super chats as well. I appreciate those uh, way more than you know. I try and read all the comments as well as all the super chats. So I don't, you know, basically say, hey, people should super chat to get their questions answered. No, I make it uh, members only so that I can try and, um, you know, maybe even limit the super chats because I don't, I don't need people to send super chats. I appreciate it so much. You know, it means, means the world, but... Um, that's why I make it just a membership so I can answer all of the questions that are, that are real questions. I like your real approach. Thank you for saying that. Um, in the UK, do you see there being an issue with, with cashing out positions, uh, outside the U S no, I think that'll probably be more, uh, probably be easier to cash out positions in your, in outside the U S because, um, uh, you're probably gonna have less people that invest into that position outside the US, more people that are investing into it inside the US. So you're gonna see limitations and restrictions probably in the US side of things. But when it comes to outside the US, you might not see any restrictions at all. So I think it'll be easier for you guys. If I kept my receipt, can I uh, get a refund for ZEV? Uh, I, I, don't, I don't think so. I don't think that's how it works. That's why we appreciate you. Well, thank you. Thank you. That means a lot. Bro, I bought AMC at $12. I have uh, 181 shares. When should I sell? So um, that's a tough question. Um, I need to, this is about to die. Don't die on me. Give me a second. There we go. Boom. All right. Um, thank you, Teresa, for becoming a member. I appreciate that. Uh, when should you sell? That's a, that's a difficult question. You're looking fly this morning. I appreciate that. Uh, <laughs> that's a difficult question saying when should you sell because um, I think it should be more of a, a staggered thing. I don't want you to miss out on your opportunities um, because – if you're if you're double triple your investment, um, you get up to certain levels. You can take out your initial investment when you get closer up to maybe the hundreds or so, and uh, you'll. No, no, I'm gonna I'm gonna answer it. No, um, yeah, you'll you'll basically be able to take out a couple of shares, and you'll have your initial investment back, right? So then, what you'll be able to do is keep the rest in there and let it grow, um, and. Anything you have, anything you do gain on top of that will be profit and you could sell closer to the peak because you only have, you know, maybe you'll probably only have like a less, maybe less than 150 shares 
um, in there. We're starting to see that pullback past the 15 moving average, which is a little ridiculous. We're starting to see more of a pullback. This is what generally happens towards the open. We're going to see it massively increase, and then they're trying to make us open up a lot lower. So let's let's see if we can get um, some buying pressure there. We're seeing a ton of negative pressure and negative volume there. I'm interested in one on. I'm interested in the one on one. I would love to to learn more. All right, that's great. I'll, I'll try and set some stuff up. If anybody else is interested in, in like one-on-ones or so where we can uh, break down maybe how to start a YouTube channel or, you know, um, all different types of stuff. You know, we can always do that and we could do that via uh, Discord easily. I can invite you to the, the audio or visual, um, you know, chat line and we can just talk. And uh, hopefully I can get something across to you. Uh, Rory, thank you for becoming a member. Rory, like Rory McElroy. I went to buy and uh, and one to sell. Is it, uh, not a question you should ask Matt or any other YouTuber. <clears throat> They're not financial advisors, and you don't and you don't want to get them in in trouble. Do your own DD. Yeah, true. Um, I will try and give what I can when it comes to, you know, buying and selling, but, uh, there's always a, a tricky situation to basically say, you know, Hey, when should you make those moves? And I always am a fan and I will say it in, um, in capturing your initial investment, wherever that actually is. And, uh, yeah, sorry, I got lost in reading a comment, but you get what I'm saying. I'm a fan in um, recapturing your initial investment and letting the, less ri letting the rest ride. We're seeing a little bit of a move with AMC jumping above. Hopefully, we can get above that $51 uh, mark. <clears throat> Remember, we should see a lot of movement. As these prices are higher, we should see a, a ton of movement in the form of dollars, not cents. Like we've seen in the past, we've seen cents, the, the movement in, in like pennies. But we're hoping that we can see dollars of movement today. Uh, Sean, Sean, Shanta, Shanta. Thank you for becoming a member. I really appreciate. Wait, I really would love to set up a one-on-one. -on -one. Okay, that sounds good then. Uh, I'll try and um set that set that Patreon up, and uh, we'll figure that out. I agree. Uh, I've really been uh, treating Dodes like a pump and dump, and it's been uh, making profits. And then usually putting it in uh, AMC. Uh, what do you think about that? That's not bad. If you if you treat something, you can treat it as as a pump and dump or something that is very volatile. We're seeing some good movement with AMC right now, and uh, it, it's great to be able to put it in something that you believe will grow, like AMC. I think Doge will grow eventually. It will it will start to flatten out because of the uh, supply that's added um, every single year. But yeah. Uh, there's always scenarios like that where you find something that moves a crazy amount and then you can put it into anything. Like for me with AMC uh, or with all of my um, you know, day trades, I take my day trades and if I make a lot, I put it over in my long-term investment account and and uh, let it grow. Obviously, I save some for uh, taxes, but we can go from there. I can't wait to buy more. It's going to uh, rock it up and then try to pull back a few shorts. Uh, I can't wait to... Wait 12 minutes. <laughs> Matt, what are, are two things we can we can do to help support you? What are two things you can help su do to support? Uh, what are two things you can do to help support me? Is hit the like button. It, it, anybody that hasn't hit the like button, please do that. And also, I don't know, follow one of my other channels. It doesn't really matter what channel it is. I do a lot on the MP Shorts channel. So if you want to check that out, then definitely do it. And follow me over there. I do live streams as well. More personal rather than anything. And that's going to be my on-the-go live stream. So I'm setting this up as my on-the-go live streams without having to do like this whole setup here. Um, this is going to be mainly for this setup. And then when I do live streams over there, it's going to be, uh, hey, I'm, I'm outside just relaxing. This is what I think about AMC, all, all this other stuff. Um, we're seeing some really big movement here up to 20, uh, sorry, 21, up to $51 and 20 cents. 
Um, good morning. I just found your channel and I'm new to investing. I don't uh, have any shares of anything. <clears throat> I see something big is going on with AMC right now. I want to buy in at $47. Should I buy in now or, or no? So once it opens, you're probably going to see a little bit of a pullback. And once you see it get to the bottom of that pullback, it doesn't hurt to buy in. But we're seeing it skyrocket right now at the open. Um, it's definitely making me think that we might see something differently. I mean, right now we have 10 minutes left and it's really jumping. So it, it doesn't hurt to make those moves. I'm not going to tell you specifically when to buy in because um, I, I can't do that. I'm not allowed to do that. Um, but... You, you need to find the best opportunity to make your move. And the way that you do that is really understanding if it's actually being overbought or oversold. So right now it looks like it is being overbought um, a lot. We will get closer and closer uh, to the open. But again, I think it's going to have a little bit of a pullback towards, the, um, you know, when it actually opens. And um, and we can go from there. I mean, it looked, the buying power looks absolutely strong. So it's making me, you know, getting a, getting a little bit concerned with, if it will pull back. All right, we're starting to see that negativity a little bit. All right, so yeah, I'm back on the train. So it's gonna probably pull back a little bit when it does open. Um, do you think crypto will ever come back or did Musk ruin? Slash, or will keep bringing it back down? Um, I think it will come back. Like back to where it was, like um, Ethereum getting up to uh, two, uh, Oh, close to 5,000. Yeah, I think it will come back. This is why I invested in, in Ethereum and I'm looking to put more into uh, different uh, coins. I have about maybe $3,000 invested total. And uh, yeah, always looking for new opportunities. I also just uh, became one of your exclusive uh, members. So <laughs> I would definitely be uh, paying attention from this point forward. Perfect. Perfect. That, that's amazing. So yeah, if you're new to investing, it's always great to get an understanding of, you know, what are the basics? First, you want to understand the basics of everything. And the first thing you want to take in is risk tolerance, risk and risk, um, uh, risk of you losing your money versus gaining your money and how much you want to risk versus reward. So uh, there's in my Patreon or in the discord group, you can actually learn a lot. And I don't mean to throw a bunch of things at you to where you have to, you know, pay money for it. Um, but uh, in the Discord group, you learn a lot. There's a lot of great people over there. And whether it's coming from me or coming from other people, they they talk about things and make it uh, and break it down. And you feel like you you don't understand what people are saying. Ask the question, and they will answer it. I mean, they're amazing for that. So you know, I appreciate everybody that's in my uh, Discord group and how much they respond because I can't always respond and. Uh, they always have their different conversations, whether it's about options, stocks, you know, crypto, whatever it is. And as time goes on, you'll understand more and more and hopefully you get really comfortable with it. And again, if you have any like, uh, you know, real questions, you can always send it directly to me in Patreon, I'm sorry, not in Patreon, in Patreon or in Discord. You can send a direct message to me and we can always, you know, talk back and forth and see um, where you're comfortable, where your knowledge is right now, and where we can grow that knowledge. So, right now at $52.30, sorry, I'm missing some things. $145, uh, very well, very well, soon. Very, very soon, but I thought you were talking about your, your money. Um, I really can't see any of this. I'm sorry if I'm, if I look like I'm just squinting the whole entire time. <laughs> so it is starting to pull back just a little bit here. And by a little bit, I mean a lot of bit. We're seeing that large red candlestick come back. We have 1,500 people in here, 2,171 likes. Thank you guys for watching. 43 people for becoming a member today. <clears throat> um, all of the super chats that I gave today. <clears throat> hey y'all i'm back at, and currently at work multitasking matt's favorite concept <laughs> it doesn't exist multitasking doesn't exist carlos cruz thank you for becoming a member carlos cruz jr 
Matt, any thoughts on the overall AMC market cap getting uh, limited as price increases, but actual cash available for short sellers is limited by actual by available dollars in the market? Any thoughts on um, overall AMC market cap getting limited as the price increases? When does that ever happen? Uh, but actual uh, cash available for short sellers is limited by available dollars in the market. Um, actual cash available for short sellers depends on their the the business um like how big the business is so for the people that are short selling it like citadel um how much money do they have to make up for that and they have a lot billions of dollars right so you need that pullback on the rsi yeah you do <clears throat> um but the actual market cap getting limited as the price increases market cap will not get limited it's only limited based on what we believe the max value is so if we believe that, um, you know, AMC market cap or total market cap can't get past, you know, 5 trillion or whatever, you know, then we'll say, oh, well, 5 trillion is the ceiling. But no, with a squeeze, it's the, the market cap can be a lot higher for a short period of time. So it's really can't, it really can't be limited. Um, but when it comes to uh, the, the business and the short sellers, they're they're only limited to the cash that they have available in for their business, and that's billions of dollars. Not being able to get to 100k. No, it can get to 100k. Um, 25 trillion dollar market cap is larger than Apple. Yeah, just because it's larger than Apple doesn't mean it can't get there for a short period of time. There's um, there's uh, plenty of businesses that can actually get to those those heights. Like obviously, if you look at the uh, squeeze situations in the past. You look at um, a Volkswagen squeeze. I would imagine the market cap was insanely high then. I, I'm pretty sure they have less, less share, or they had less shares. But still, um, their market cap was insanely high. And yes, it can get to those points. It's not dependent on market cap. It's dependent on what people will pay for the actual stock. So market cap just really gives you an understanding of how big the business is. But or how big the stock is, how big the business is. But the the problem is, is that it doesn't tell you everything, especially if there's a certain amount of um, uh, stock available and those short sellers need to cover, they have to cover, they'll pay any price they can under, you know, a certain certain amount in order to, you know, let go of it. You know, they'll pay 100K for it. They'll pay 200K for it. Um, and what, what it's going to do is it's going to basically say the market cap is up at this point for a very short period of time until someone sells probably a couple of minutes later. What's up, Matt? I'm from, I'm from Reading, PA. Uh, these, these hedge funds. Oh, you are? Do, do I know you? I, I might. Uh, he says you should just take their, their losses and cover their shorts and, and naked shorts before they have to cover all of the, the other naked shorting going on in the market. Yeah, exactly. 100%. And, and if I know you, then what's going on? But even if I don't know you, then what's going on? Thank you for becoming a member. Um, but yeah, you're absolutely right. They do need to, uh, they need to start uh, just taking their losses, accept their losses, and you know going about their day i mean if they accept their losses it it decreases the squeeze potential but either way it gives us that opportunity to continue to increase like this this is this is clear fomo buying we might see this continue to, to rise right when it opens you know we got one minute until it opens and you see it's going from 62 it's going up to 6260 at the moment nice reversal candle and and here we go yep ready to skyrocket Look at that five minute candle. Beautiful. That boy got a flat top, fresh <laughs> big up from Detroit. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I got I got a little something. A little something. Now, I can't wait to get my actual haircut to see what it what it what it looks like because I usually don't wear my hair like this, but I figured I'd go like natural without having to put any product in there. 
but we're up 9%, about almost 10%. We're starting to decrease a little bit. It looks like it's going back and forth. Let's see, are we open? We are open. It's 9.30. We played football. I was, I was on the bench. Oh, really? That Carlos. Okay. How you doing? How you been? Small world. Did you just did you just find me because you were you know searching AMC or did you, uh, you know see any like videos on like I don't know, Twitter, Facebook, something like that. I haven't posted anything on Facebook in a while. What price range do you do you buy stocks? What price range do I usually buy stocks? I'm usually looking for lower end uh, or lower price stocks. Something not crazy low, but something that actually has uh, a lot of movement to it. So uh, I'm looking to have something that can move maybe $5 in a day, but then it's priced below $50. Um, so that's typically what I'm looking for. Uh, I don't know how to say that. It's like Louver. Thank you for becoming a member. I appreciate that. We got 45 members, 45 new members in here. 1,435 people watching. Um, almost, we're one like away from 2,200. In a couple of years, how much do you think uh, the crypto market is going to grow? Quite a bit. What is it worth? Like 2.8? Let's see, coin market cap. No, let's go to Coinbase. Whoops. So we're starting to settle a little bit. After that large red candlestick, hopefully people were able to get something in there. We might see some continuation of that. Look at that. Look at that selling pressure on that candlestick. Or let's say shorting pressure on the candlestick. I start to see this come back a little bit. So the overall market um, right now is up 3.2%. I'm trying to see where the heck the... Did they change this? I got to sign in. Come on. Oh, wow. Here we go. $53.50. Look at this large candlestick right here. Look at this. Got verification. Come on. Sorry if I'm, I'm right over the screen. $54, look at this. Look at that little gap. Oh, we're starting to see it pull back. We're, we're being overbought at the moment. <clears throat> but I imagine we're going to continue to see that buying pressure. Continue to see that jump up. Loving this. Let me go back. I don't know what's going on with my my screen. I can't even get back to my my chat. There we go. Yeah, fifty five dollars, fifty five ninety. Look at this, fifty six dollars. Look at this movement. Look at this candlestick. These two candlesticks are huge. Five point eight million shares. Two point six million shares. Absolutely crazy. Yeah, if you guys want to follow me on Twitter, definitely do that. Uh, link will be in the description. I didn't pin anything to the chat today. I usually do. $145 today. Let's go. I hope you're, I hope you're right by saying that. We could see some massive movements. Do you think we're going to see 100%? Might get ahead of ourselves, but we're seeing some pretty decent movement. What's going on with BB? I'm looking for a good opportunity to buy something. So looking for uh, BB definitely started to make a move. Uh, Zom, Zom's up 3%. Uh, what's interesting about uh, VW squeeze is with shareholders refuse to sell and lose the majority of, of German legacy brand for foreign interests. Huh. And thank you, Melissa Lee. We, we love you. Initial plan was to save save up for a new MacBook. Next. 
having a beefy PC for college. Turns out I got enough uh, profit to buy buy house, <laughs> used car, pay for my college, and and buy a MacBook. That's that's hilarious. We're starting to see a lot of growth here. I mean, 4.7 million shares worth of volume there. 2.5. We're seeing 140 right now. It's probably going to uh, increase more. We are seeing some good movement here. Thank you, James, for following me on Twitter. This is what we want. Yep, we want that the violent ups and downs. Yes, we do. Because we know that's where we're getting close once we start seeing those massive movements. Bed Bath & Beyond is up 1%. It did decrease a little bit. So hopefully we don't see AMC follow the trend. It's starting to starting to come back a little bit. So we might see them follow that trend here. You know, the way BB is, is dropping down. Um, where's cost at? That's dropping down significantly. Just be careful with those. Be careful. Know that we've seen all of that buying pressure. All that buying pressure. I'm waiting for this to, it's looking like it's consolidating. That went from uh, $12.46 up to $12.74, decreasing down to uh, where it is now, $12.53. I'm going to... I'm going to increase my ZOM position. Are you? Are you waiting for it to decrease a little bit? What is, did FUBU TV, FUBU TV increased quite a bit. Where's FUBU? Also, cost is increasing. I want to see that drop down a little bit before I can make that move. But I, I'll find uh, a good point to get into cost. If hedges don't get uh, don't get investigated soon, I'm gonna walk into stock exchange like bait. <laughs> if if we get to seventy, I'll be so happy. I hear you. I think we're gonna we're gonna get to seventy dollars. There's no question about it. We're gonna get to seventy dollars. I don't know about today. I hope that happens. I hope we see a little bit of reversal. So this is what I like about cost. You see the movement in this candlestick. Look at how much movement we see in this candlestick. $27 up to $28. So literally a dollar a dollar move within that candlestick. Easily almost $2 of a move in that candlestick. You can literally have a fluctuation, just a, a pulsing action of it increasing quite a bit. And then buy and sell really quick and make $50 easily. Do you build your watch list from Fidelity? A lot of times, yes. A lot of times, yes, I will build a, a watch list from Fidelity because they have a lot more of the information. However, there's some information from uh, from Yahoo Finance, I believe, that I get um, that I don't get from anything else, which is a list of history to understand how how quick the stock moves or how how many dollars it moves in a day. I always wanted to move, you know, five to ten dollars in a day so that I can basically gain a dollar or two dollars within some of that movement. Everyone trying to get uh, rich off AMC and GME. I'm trying to buy my, my freedom slash pay off my college debt. I hear you. The same here. That's the that's one of the first things that I'll do with it if I make, you know, if, if I pocket over a certain amount because my the interest that I'm gaining on my, um, my investments, my long-term investments don't make sense or they make sense, but it they make less than what I would, Actually, that's a lie. They make more, but the um, the um, college loan amount is actually decreasing the amount that I'm getting. So I just want to pay that off and not worry about it. Couldn't think of words for a second. We're up 12% on, on AMC. That's pretty good. We're seeing a little bit of consolidation. Yep, a little bit of consolidation followed by a large green candlestick means... Boom. Let's hopefully we could see this uh, increase a little bit. <laughs> That's funny though. Oh man, I was, uh, I'm just thinking when to, when to buy into more. 
Yeah, I, I hear you. It's so tough because it's starting to go up. Is it going to continue to to fall back down or are you going to see that that increase? It's so difficult to predict because obviously I, I knew that it was going to drop down a little bit. That's usually what you see. But this massive movement, um, didn't expect that this early. I expected it to happen after maybe five-ish, 10-ish candlesticks, but it was after two. We're starting to see that that impact here. I mean, either way, I, I think that when you start to get below 100, the cost basis really doesn't matter. Um, you start to get above 100, yeah, it starts to matter a little bit more. Uh, can you give a, a short explanation of consolidation? Uh, I'm, I'm only two weeks into this and there, there's still a lot of, uh, a lot that I don't know. Yeah. Uh, so basically consolidation is movement sideways. So whenever you see something where it's like, okay, it, it ended somewhere around these points, right. And it could be, it could be a larger spread. It doesn't have to be just like one point and trading exactly sideways. It could be a point to where it actually looks like it's trading lower, but the overall trend is like sort of sideways. Right. So we look at the average and that's trading this way. So we see this large candlestick, which creates a flag. So we're looking for a bull flag scenario. Um, so you create this this flag pole. Right. And then this consolidation will create a flag, create um, followed by a large green candlestick, which indicates a large upward amount of buying pressure. And that's exactly what we're seeing here. While they're also partnering it with their shorts because they're continuing to try and push this thing down. Because there's nobody selling right now. You probably have some people that are selling and uh, day trading it and swing trading it. But majority of people are holding the position while they're buying in more. And then other you know, hedge funds are shorting it. So either way, uh, consolidation is just sideways movement. Thank you, good sir. No problem. So you can find that in multiple areas. Let's look at what BlackBerry is doing. So BlackBerry is dropping down quite a bit. That went fourteen dollars to fourteen thirty-five. So that's not even a massive amount of movement. I thought it would be a lot more. Huge candlestick, not really that much movement. We got one that will squeeze happen before New Year's. I I think so. Yeah, before. Um, before January 1st? Yeah, I think we'll have that squeeze way before then. I think we'll see um, where the true value of AMC is um, somewhere around that time. So when we get to the summertime, we'll be able to see where the true value of AMC is, especially with people going to the movie theaters all the time and all that stuff. So uh, would you say the, the shorters are messaging with BlackBerry? Uh <laughs> are messing with black. Okay. <laughs> For some reason I said messaging with black bears to say, are they trying to hide their messages? Um, y yes, yes, I would say they are. Um, but you also do have a lot of wall street bets that actually pumped it. So wall street bets was pumping blackberry, uh, quite a bit and, uh, increased the price a hell of a lot while also being tied to AMC. So it was the AMC, uh, people that were looking to, uh, buy into something at a lower price they did and maybe they ended up taking some of their profits thinking that they couldn't get any higher uh Matt, take a look at mvis tell me what you think i'll definitely yes i mean massive massive movement um wow um the movement downhill was just ridiculous, but you could have gained so much on the way up. I still think MVIS is good. It should be around uh, $25 um, easily. The The amount of uh, volume that goes into this is just crazy. And the way that it moves so fast, I love it. I have a long-term position in MVIS to see where it gets to. I believe it could be a long-term position and a short-term position, pretty much all of the above. Long-term, um, you know, looking at day trade, swing trade, and, um, you know, over a year, two years or so. Uh, how does the strike price on a call benefit us? Because I heard uh, strike prices of $145 that uh, a person focused on. On how does that benefit the price? See, now I physically don't know about options. Um, I'm a person that's just starting to get into options now. So I don't know how that truly does benefit us. Um, a hundred, $145 strike price. 
I guess the only way that I can think that that benefits us is understanding that people are believing that it's going to get to $145 today or $145, you know, this week. No, that's the only way that this could physically benefit us is by saying, hey, I'm, I'm, I basically believe that this is going to get to $145. And I believe so much that I'm going to take out this many, you know, call options. So that's the way that I think about it. But then again, I, like I said, I truly don't know a lot about options. I only know like the basic level. Um, so, uh, that's where I would take it. But if someone does believe it's just like gambling, if, if you see somebody bet, um, a hundred million on, you know, I don't know, Floyd Mayweather to beat, uh, Logan Paul, you're going to probably believe that he knows something or she knows something that other people do not. And you're probably going to bet on it. So. I've been on vacation since last week and was hoping that the squeeze would would have been before I go back to work. <laughs> yeah. Uh, actually, is Wall Street Bets... Actually, is Wall Street Bets the apes, a.k.a. us, or are they the enemy? Forgive me for because I'm, I'm new to all this. <clears throat> they're not... So they're not... Um, it, it's tricky because there's some people that are actually apes. There's some people that are just there to make profits. We're seeing MVIS take a huge jump. Look at this, from $20 up to 22. Look at this movement, man. What's what's AMC doing? AMC is not really moving as much and Oh my goodness. MVIS is taking a huge jump. Starting to come back a little bit. Is it being overbought at the moment? It's still not being overbought. How is that not being overbought? I mean, we'll take it, but how is that not being overbought? <clears throat> I had 100 shares of MVIS at like $1.70 last year and sold it like three days later at $0.58. Cents. I'm sick now. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> you could have bought a lot more at that, at those prices. Jesus Christ. Are the prelims before May weather right, were, were better? Yeah, I'm just saying. <laughs> Apes equal us. Uh, good guys. Yeah, I, like I said, the um, Wall Street bets is tricky because a lot of them will actually pump positions. <laughs> like I said, I love MVIS. Yeah, a lot of people actually pump positions and dump positions in um, Wall Street bets, but that's that's just a select group of people. We're starting to see this full consolidation here. Look at this, full consolidation. After this large increase, we're starting to see this right here. Um, hopefully, we could see a large candlestick that pushes up up pushes us up over a hundred hundred dollars. Would love it, or sixty dollars, seventy dollars. Get us up to those levels. <clears throat> I've cleared up like 1.5k now. Oh, I've cleared 1.5k. That's pretty good. I see a lot of people making uh, money off options. I'm scared to. Uh, I want to do the first option trade. Yeah, I mean, I'm not afraid to do the first option trade. I actually had to go through a different level. I was going to make my first options trade on Friday, um, but I. Uh, didn't have options available on Weeble, so I had to wait for that to get approved. Actually, doesn't have Shiba strike price when the price uh, for that option strike moves up or down. You make or lose money. As far as uh, crypto or crypto goes, uh, Teller coin uh, super low market cap and is. Uh, and a limit supply of 1.5 million coins. So we're currently sitting at uh, $65 per coin. FYI to everybody. Yeah, there are a lot of great coins out there. Uh, I don't know if you've looked into ADA. I think ADA is going to be a really good one. That's going to get to probably around $30 per coin. Um, and currently sitting at um, $1 and it might be $1.50. Between $1.50 and $1.80. Somewhere around there, I would imagine. Um, I bought MVIS contract, but yeah, I think I have checked, uh, Teller before. Wall Street Bets loves to YOLO and, and do some borderline stupid things. GME AMC started over though. Yeah, yeah, yes. I've 
I've been hearing everyone talk about your hair. I just now looked at it in the screen and it looks fresh. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. If you lose the premium, you lose the premium. I mean, that's all you lose is whatever you invested. You don't lose anything more, which is which is definitely good. Um, but it's not like you're investing at the same level as you would invest in stocks. We're starting to see that that candle. There we go. After that consolidation, we just broke over that level. Let's keep it going. Don't don't pull back. Come on. I just got excited. I just got excited. Keep it going. There we go. Yeah, we just hit this level. There we go. We just hit this level and we broke past that. So that's good. We were hoping we were going to see that continue. But they're not giving me that full candlestick. It's 3.5 million shares versus 1 million shares. Uh, 1 million shares here. Let's see this continue on the way up. Um, they AMC hits 10K. I'm going to cry. <laughs> My suggestions for crypto as uh, I'm trading for over a year now. Not financial advice. Anchor, I, I have 2,000 shares of Anchor, so I'm with you on that. Um, sushi, and it it doesn't really matter if you have financial advice for crypto because it's not regulated, so it doesn't really matter. This is why Elon Musk can tweet out all the things he can tweet out. Uh, Hypno, thank you for becoming a member. ADA coin. Uh, is it on Robinhood? It's not on Robinhood. It's on Coinbase, though. It's Cardano. A lot of people were talking about it a while ago. I have about 240 or 280 coins. I can't remember exactly how many. Actually, I have Coinbase open. Why not just check it? Oh, it logged me out, so I'm not going back into it. Uh, does does Mayweather need to invest? I feel like he should, but he doesn't. I don't think he does. He just blows his money. That's why Elon gets uh, threatened by Anonymous. Yeah, it's true. All right, we're starting to see this level. All right, um, guys, I have to end early. One, I need to go to the bathroom, and two, I want to go say hi to the kids. So um, we're seeing a lot of great movement. Um, right now, we're looking like we're we're leveling off here for AM, AMC. Um, and now we're starting to really break. Might be a bad time to go to the bathroom. All right. Well, I guess I can't do it. Guess I can't do it. All right. We're seeing this, uh, you know, make a move up to $57. And now it's starting to pull back down. Jeez, the stock market is just crazy. AMC is just crazy. It's up 17% again today right now. DraftKings is up as well. Love seeing that. That brings my positions up. Let's see what my positions look like. Whoops. So yeah, uh, here are my positions. I'm holding, uh, I got about $25,000 up on AMC. Uh, it looks like uh, DraftKings, I'm getting close to my break-even point of $55. We're really breaking for AMC up to $57 and uh, about to break below $57. We broke up above 57.19, so that's good. That's good to see. Um, up on Ethereum, Tesla, I'm down. Now, the only thing I'm uh, worried about is that we do need to pay taxes uh, for the dividend, a dividend in crypto. Just. Just became a member. Uh, you already made a hundred dollars this morning. <laughs> what does that mean? What are you talking about? I I gain, I gain like uh. Fifty members. So I made about fifty dollars from memberships. I guess that's what you're saying. Um. Let's see. We ain't going nowhere. See you, kiddos. <laughs> the longer you hold is going to <laughs> the, toilet, the longer it climbs. Yeah, I guess that's I guess that's it. I'm gonna keep I'm gonna keep holding. But either way, I mean, I have to end the stream at ten because I have to. I, I work, 
So work my nine to five. Great stream, thanks, cousin. Uh, how are how are you? I used to have eleven shares of G, but now I have one. Um, sell it, and I want to trade GME for shares of Apple. Yeah, if you find something of more consistent value, then definitely uh, have that or make that move. We're almost at fifty nine. Jeez, it, it is me. I'm holding. I'm holding, having to go to the bathroom, and it's it's growing. I got a lot of positions that are green now. I just need Zometica to make a bigger move than what they what they're making. I've been watching your, your live stream. I heard you talk about cost, uh, so I bought at the low, and now it's up. Yeah, yeah. I cost just makes huge moves very fast. I, I love that position. Just know that that was one of those ones that squeezed as well. Um, and yeah, it's up to thirty dollars. I should have I should have put some money in there. I didn't even think about it. Well, I did think about it. I just didn't want to do it until after the live stream ended. Wow, it's moving. Uh, I'm going to spread the news in, in Reading about your channel. People need to learn uh, out here. They don't they don't got much uh, much guidance. I agree with you. I agree with you. And thank you, I appreciate that. But yeah, I've been doing this for a while now. I haven't been doing much investing content in the beginning of my my channel, but I was able to you know jump on that opportunity because I I love investing and I'm glad that it's starting to resonate with people. Um, but yeah, when we look at costs, uh, we look at the year to date. Look at this. So this was one of those ones uh, back in January. It got to a hundred. It got to higher than that. I think it was like 170. That's, that's, I don't know why it only shows that. Yeah, $174 is what cost got to. So that's one of those ones that you definitely need to make those moves. It got to 46 just recently. Um, it squeezed to 126. Uh, have you thought about uh, recording your live streams and making it a podcast? Um, no, no, not at all. He's a runner. She's a drag star. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, we're moving right now. We are moving. Look at this. Look at this. About to get up to sixty dollars. I'm gonna have to watch this, and I'm not gonna be able to put too much time into it because I, I, uh, you know, I'm a nine to five. But guys, I'm gonna get out of here. Uh, I gotta, I gotta get out of here because I, I can't take this anymore. If we close the stream, uh, the stock dives, and we're not friends anymore. <laughs> Do you want me to keep it open? <laughs> Is that what it's about? Is it's if I, if it starts to pull back, then I, I have the okay to, to end the stream. It's starting to pull back here, so I, I didn't even end the stream yet. So there we go. All right. Well, I have to get out of here because I have to get to work. Uh, thank you, Melissa. Leave for the greatest piece of financial advice ever. I don't, who, what? I'm so excited. My $61.47 is getting there. That's good to hear. Thanks for a stream. Yeah. Guys, hit the like button on the way out. Hit the subscribe button. Um, hit the notification bell if you want to get notified when I post a video. Also, um, you know, check out some of my other channels. I have the MP Shorts channel where I post a lot of short form content on different stocks. And if you want some suggestions, um, you know, comment in those as well. Um, also, if you want to join the Discord group or join as a channel member, definitely do that as well. But I'm going to get out of here and uh, I'll go ahead and catch you guys.